Mark Striegel. John, how are you, man? I'm doing great. Hanging good out be, here in Jersey City. So good to be back, back with you tonight here on uh, Talking Metal, streaming live. Who do we have on the show tonight? You want to let us know? We have an amazing show. We have Eddie Ojeda from Twisted Sister, one of my top favorite bands of all time. Absolutely. Definitely. And we have Jeremy Asbrock from the Ace Frehley Band, the Gene Simmons Band, and a lot of other cool people. The Talisman, Rock and Roll Residency, a lot of cool stuff. So we got a jam-packed show. It's going to be great. And we've got Eddie joining us soon. Let's have a Talking Metal Toast. Talking Metal Toast, my first drink of the evening. Uh, starting easy, uh, I'm not usually a light beer guy, but I'm going to go with a Bud Light. What nice. are you drinking? I am drinking, of course, my favorite vodka, Dash Vodka. And uh, right. this oh, is, so I'm good. getting a little fancy here. This is a, uh, a Dash Vodka and Cranberry with a splash of soda. How about that? Okay. Now, when you I'm say soda, a... like like Coke or, or like what, what type of soda? Club soda. Club, Club soda. soda. Club right. so I'm, I'm even, I'm that fancy, club soda. Yeah, that's old school, like scotch and soda. They're not scotch talking about soda. Coke, they're talking about club soda, right. Correct, correct. Yeah. And uh, right. I might be getting what's called a club chair. You have to so that Google would be a that. vodka soda, right? Yeah, vodka, vodka cranberry with some soda. Right, okay, got They it. call it a splash of soda. Right, very good. All right, so yeah, some great uh, guests tonight. Um, looking forward to meeting Jeremy. I, I've never... Um, spoken with him before or met him i've seen him play live a number of times and we'll be talking with eddie ojeda who put out this great yep. record um boy when did this come out a while 2006. ago 2006 yeah, yeah i've got it too right here it's cool that we both have it yeah. in our hands yeah yeah so yeah. <laughs> great stuff and uh we've interviewed i believe i've interviewed eddie twice maybe three times once with you maybe once solo or maybe twice with you i, I don't know I, i'm not i'm not exactly we've sure had Eddie on the show so many times i interviewed him way back in the day pre-tv show and then of course uh we jammed with him uh during a talking metal jam of paranoid and uh we did some other ones too with eddie right yeah we did paranoid we did uh, i want to rock uh um, right which was was epic with uh, Corey, Corey from Clark. Uh, Warrior Soul on drums, Richard Christie from Death, and of course the Howard Stern Show on on drums and Chard Wald of the Dam, of course Dam, yeah. uh, Richard Christie's uh, more current band, if you will. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that was great, and I look forward to hearing what Eddie has been up to post Twisted Sister. Got got some questions yeah. for him, of course Twisted Sister. Uh, did their farewell tour, if you will, a uh, number of years back, maybe what, three, four years ago at this point. So right. we'll see uh, what's going on, if anything, with Twisted Sister. And I did want to mention uh, the music we were listening to on the way into the podcast version of this was uh, this tune right here. Um, it was, uh, oh, I Am Legend Tonight. I am legend tonight. We were listening to that on the podcast version of this. I know the people on the live stream didn't hear it, but um, man, well, some great guitar playing on that song and a lot of Kiss songs by Bob Kulik, a guy we both knew and we lost. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess yesterday or today. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, when that um, I'm so shocked to hear the news. Um, yeah, it's it's really a difficult thing. Bob Kulik was a great guitar player. I've known of Bob Kulik for, for many, many years since I was uh, in high school or even earlier, maybe grade school. And he was, of course, Bruce Kulik's brother. We just had Bruce on the show. Right. And Bob played on some Kiss records. And uh, he was a really nice guy. I was just with Won a Bob. Grammy for producing yeah. Motorhead? Mm -hmm. Yep. I just uh, was with Bob in... October in Miami, Florida, and uh, had a great time hanging out with him there. So uh, I'm really shocked. Um, Only and, 70 uh, years old. I was shocked too, and and very mm -hmm. sad. And and we will all yeah, respect hold up the family's uh, picture of uh, oh, Bruce and Bob. And uh, what is that? Bob, actually? This is a DVD of Bruce and Bob uh, doing uh, Kiss classics on guitar together. Wow. Like a, um, like an instructional type of a thing. It's really cool. 
Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I actually got this from Bruce and Bob. So it was really cool. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really sad about that. I, I want this to be a great show, but I, I don't want to start it uh, until we acknowledge uh, how great Bob was and pay tribute to him by playing the I'm a Legend Tonight song on the podcast version of this show. Yeah, and while, while, while we're talking about that, guys, we do this live, and today's date is May 29th, 2020. It goes out over John's Facebook page, so we'd love to have you join us on Friday night to uh, – to, oh, John is actually, Sorry, I, I, I actually some watching audio the live stream. <laughs> I'm watching the live stream. <laughs> yeah, um, but, yeah, we'd love to have you join us on Friday nights. I, I believe we'll continue to do this as, as long as this COVID-19 thing is still a, a thing on Fridays – um, I, I thought, I thought that, you know, once we get the clear and we're kind of back to normal, um, I'd love to continue doing this. I don't know if it would think still be on Fridays or we do it on different, a different day because Fridays yeah. are a big night out for everyone. And the whole right. reason for doing this on Fridays was no one's going out, you know? So right. I, I don't know. So would you, yeah, Friday's a great night to do it during this COVID time again. Uh, as I like to call it, uh, and I'm not making Love light that. of COVID, but um, it, it kind of is funny. It's COVID time again. But uh, I hope it's not COVID time again in the future. Right. <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, so once we're back to normal, um, we might want to move it to a different day that we think people are home, but we want to do it on the day that people are actually home. Friday nights, when it's not COVID time again, people are out having fun, and that's one of the days people hang out. Yeah. Now, John, um I want to talk about next Friday because it's going to be an awesome show already. We have a guest book for that, but your your mic is peaking just a little bit. I don't know if you can bring the the uh, is? Okay. down you know just just I, a hair. I think I can do it. Okay, hang on once. Hang on, and I am going to bring down the levels. How's that? Is it a little bit better? Yeah, it's better already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, so next one, week, see- John. John, by the way you know, has been, I give you more credit for Purdue. I mean, it's always a joint effort from us, but you're <laughs> definitely pulling more than your, your, uh, your share on these live streams. John has been booking Thank you. most of the guests. I, I know I booked Eric Turner, but I think you booked all the other ones and uh, <laughs> running the show uh, technically. So Thank yeah. You. And thanks for putting these together every here. Friday night. I, I love it. It's got me excited about talking metal um, yeah. more. So I'm always excited about talking metal, yeah. but this added element of the video uh, stream is definitely fun and new for us. And I, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's really fun. And let me say that, Mark, you have kept Talking Metal, the podcast, going all along, even when I was out doing Ace Tours and right. other stuff. And, of course, I'll be out in tour with Ace again. Uh, but uh, I, I'm going to ensure that I am a full-time part of Talking Metal again. And uh, this has been a, a really cool thing. Um, yeah. So, uh, by the way, you know, okay, I'm getting all kind of calls here and I think I know why. Hang on once I got, I'm like, you know what? I was making fun of people on TV when they've got that, uh, phone call stuff happening. Right. And, uh, guess what happened to me? So every, every time I make fun of somebody for something, which I don't really ever do, but, uh, you know, maybe just to myself, it happens to me. So I, Hey, we got Eddie. Oh, there he is. Eddie, Eddie, how you doing? (laughs) I need an ID or something like that. Yeah, uh, well, let's give you a proper guys. introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, uh, joining us here on the Talking Metal live stream, legendary guitarist from Twisted Sister, Eddie Ojeda. Eddie, how are you, man? Good, good. <laughs> you know, hanging in there. Eddie, thank you so much for doing this. I know we, uh, since I've last talked to you, you moved to Nashville. Yep, yep. So tell, tell, tell us what happened. Like, I mean, uh, I, Nashville's such a cool place. I think you had said that Every time you went down there, you, you found out more and more great musicians were hanging down there. It's like the whole town is guitar oriented. And so it's just like the perfect place to go. Yep. That's the thing. Um, you know, the first time I came here, like years ago, like uh, the first thing I saw when I got off the plane was a Les Paul. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yeah. And then like just guitars everywhere. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. But I never thought, I, you know, I never thought I'd live there. Like people in New York never think they're going to leave, you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lately, it's become pretty easy to to want to leave. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now know, everyone I wants know. to leave, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still a great place. I mean, I was grew up there, and I, I, I always loved New York. I feel you know a connection there, but 
you know, it's really, it's tough to see the, what's going on, man, you know. Yeah, and, and the one thing is, and I know you, I know you agree with me, is you got to be a millionaire to live in Manhattan now. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just gotten so over the top. That, yep. And I don't, you know, I don't get it. I mean, the difference, I mean, it just, in 30 years, it shouldn't be that crazy. Right. I right. mean, it was 30 years, but it got <laughs> to the point where I think even if you buy an apartment there, you're still going to have to pay about $11,000 a month for like a two bedroom apartment. Right. Right. Because you have to pay taxes and maintenance and right. there's all these other fees. So even if you owned it, or right. you, buy, you still pay. Like, right. like you didn't still, say you're almost worse off because now you're paying the taxes and maintenance. Yeah. So yep. you're probably better off just renting at this point. Right, which is, believe it or not, I'm still renting. And I, I used to live in Manhattan. Now I'm in Jersey City. But, uh, yeah, so I don't even, I haven't even bought, even though most people think you're supposed to buy. But as you're saying, and you're correct, it, it's, it's just as bad or worse if you buy. Oh, I, I know. I mean, Jersey City is cool. And my, well, you bumped into my yep. brother. Yeah, I ran into Eddie's brother, Mark. I didn't even tell you. I was at a restaurant just down the street from my house, and I ran into Eddie's brother, who also yeah. lives here in Jersey City. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. That whole area is unbelievable. I mean, it's yeah. just developed so much. It used to just be, like, empty space. Right, that yep. Whole, that whole <laughs> water, right by the Hudson River. And right. I remember I used, I used to bike ride, like, over the George Washington Bridge and, and, and bike wow. ride on the Jersey side. And I remember seeing all these warehouses and everything, and I was saying, like, it's unbelievable. Like, Manhattan is, like, so developed. And this is, I said, this has got to be a, this got to be a gold mine here. You yeah. Know? And there's it, a, is. There's a, now it is. There's a movie, I believe it's uh, that Sid and Nancy movie, and it, which probably was shot in, like, the eight, early to mid-'80s. And there's a scene right over there in Jersey City on the Hudson, and there's nothing there in, nothing. The, in the movie. Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, there's a... I remember there was one building, and it was all warehouses, and they were all run down. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, and River Road was always there. You know River Road right. now because you live yeah. on that side. But, you know, I remember bike riding there, you know, in the late 70s as a, you know, I was a kid. Wow. I used to take my bike all the way to, you know, I used to go. That's so cool that you went place. from in the city across the George Washington Bridge and down. Yeah, it was great because the George Washington Bridge always had that walking riding area. So, right, right. You know, that's how, that was my, that was my vacation. That's how I got out of the city, you know. <laughs> right on. I went to Fort Lee. And <laughs> so That's great. So Eddie, it's been a number of years now since Twisted Sister uh, stopped playing live shows, and we just wanted right. to kind of catch up with you and see what you're up to uh, musically, if anything. I mean, it was John and I were just talking. You gave us a great album already back yeah. in 2006, yeah. an album that we loved. Ronnie James Dio, Rudy Sarzo, yeah. I think Jolyn Turner, right, was on this. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, yeah. On it. yeah. So are, are you uh, are you doing any solo music? Are you what are you up to at musically? Anything at I the moment? Some stuff, but you know, I've been in the process of like moving the last year and a half and selling my house, and it was kind of hectic. And then, I mean, luckily, I was able to sell my house in New York just before this whole virus thing happened. Because wow, you know, wow, okay, you know, it, it's what's going on there, and it's just you know, it's sad to see, but. You know, uh, so the whole moving thing was kind of hectic because I was living, you know, the house I lived in, where I, we lived there for 20 years, you know. <laughs> and there was a lot of stuff there, man. It was like packing was like, oh. I believe it. <laughs> and like, and then throwing things out. And, and people think, that they don't realize what moving can be like, you know. And, uh, <laughs> so it, it was. <laughs> it was too busy. Fun, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm still like, I mean, there's no pictures on the wall yet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought you had like a professional Marshall background of just white there. It looks good. I, I love that that little uh, Marshall stack, right? That's one of those yeah, micro that's stacks. Little baby one, that's it. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> it's, you know, I have to have something, you know. To yeah. So, Eddie, when did you, phys like your brother was saying you were in the process. Now, when did you literally, so you just sold your house. When did you physically go down there? Well, I actually got this place about, in September, it'll be two years. Oh, so okay, cool. I was going back and forth. And then, you know, I couldn't really put the house on the market until I had a substantial amount of things moved down here. And then right. I put it on the market. And, you know, the first uh, 
the first agent I worked with didn't it didn't work out well, but the second one I worked with was great, and we you know we sold the house in two weeks, and oh, cool. uh, then after that, and that was just before, I mean we left that like just before the whole, you know, quite the pandemic hit. Wow, yeah. good for you that you got down there. Wow. Yeah, I, you know we were in Rock. I was in Rockland County, so um, which is on the Jersey side, like a lot of. People in Manhattan don't even know where we're right. Going. So there's the Hudson River that separates for all you people that don't know New York. Hudson River separates New York and New Jersey, and Rockland right. County, New York, is on the Jersey side of the Hudson River. Right on the upper, like right up upper from Jersey County. Yeah. So right, we just educated a few people that you know. <laughs> unless, unless you live in Westchester, I really you know it's unbelievable to me. Like if in Long Island, I'll ask somebody, "Yeah, I live in Rockland County. Where is that, man?" Like. Oh. Okay, like near right. Buffalo, I'm like, right. no. That's <laughs> yeah, so funny that they it's don't know. 20 miles from the George Washington Bridge. Right, right, right. right. It's, right it's right there. <laughs> That's great. And it's rocking. I mean, what took so long? You know, like, yeah. And now people are, you know, it's amazing. Like, it's just something about the, they know Jersey. They know that Jersey's there. It's so weird that they don't know Rockland County, but They're I believe Rockland it. County. I believe it. Oh, you mean it turns back into New York? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am map. So, so, so Eddie, you're, you're, you're there now in Nashville, um, possibly settling in. Um, will you start recording new music? You think? I hope so. I mean, I got, I got some new solo stuff that, uh, I've had in the can for a while, you know, um, and I got the basic tracks done. Some oh, cool. really, really good stuff that I, I feel really good about. But I just haven't had the chance to get back in the studio and 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 finish up. So once I get all this moving stuff out of the way, uh, which is soon, you know, I'm still unpacking, but sort of little by little, you know, and now there's so many people that have studios here. And then this thing happens and nobody can go. No, yeah, <laughs> no one can get can't together. Go. get together with a mask and an oxygen and, you know, whatever. <laughs> Now, now when you did when you did Axis to Axis um, back, I guess it was what two thousand six. We were saying right. Um, you had just some obviously really impressive vocalists joining you on that record. I mean, yeah. Ronnie James Dio, of course, D. Snyder did uh, did uh, a, a, one song with you, I think, on yeah, the album. Paul Rigby. Yeah, which was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Amazing cover of the Beatles classic, Jolyn Turner. Uh, are you thinking once again uh, you would pull in some some names like that? Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I love doing it because it's just a lot of fun to work with people that uh, I admire, that I like as friends. You know, that I've been lucky enough to make friends with, like Ronnie. Right. You know? um, and the thing about Ronnie James Dio, I don't know if I told you the story, but you know, we were playing together in Puerto Rico. And they were opening for us, which is wow. weird because we did a whole tour with Dio, like right after he left uh, Rainbow, he went on his own and he did quite well. And we were opening for for them. And I after, think, after he left Sabbath, probably yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so I we probably I think it was about six months we were together. So you know you get to really know people when you're on tour with them, and. So I got to know him and Vivian pretty well, well, all the guys in the band. But, you know, we, um, we're we playing in Puerto Rico together. This is years after that tour. And I told Ronnie, I said, listen, I'm doing a solo album. And I wrote a song that's very kind of Dio-ish. You know, I sort of, it was inspired kind of by the way you write and, and, and do your music. I said, would you sing on it? And he goes, sure, without even listening to it. You know, like wow. how do you know it doesn't suck? <laughs> you know, like I think he trusted you. Like yeah, he he yeah. knew he could trust you. Which is you know, which is like I thought about it. I said like wow, he just like trust me to, to do this. And he says like, and then you know I, he says you know just send me the tracks. And luckily he had just put a new studio in his in his house. Maybe that helped. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> well, I might as well try something. Like, you know, so so it 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 was like. You know, the time was perfect. The timing, I guess. You know, he just put a new studio in. He wanted to work it out. And so I sent him the tracks. And, and I get an email from him. He says, I'm going to do all the vocals, and you'll like it. He says, I'm, <laughs> going to, I'm going to change a few lyrics, and you'll like it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I'll send it to you soon. 
and, you know, and, and it was funny. It was, and he sent. So, I, I love that. Yeah, and he did. You know, in the tracks when I first got him, I listened to him alone, and which is, you know, now they're doing a lot of that now with. Uh, where you're just hearing a vocal, like a first Oh, wow, yes. Yeah, an so isolated vocal, vocal track, isolated. yeah. And sometimes, you know, you can really hear how good a vocal is when you can hear it by itself. Like, and yeah. And hear Ronnie by himself, you know. Wow, like, that's it, amazing. That, that's cool. That's great. Whether, no matter what song it was, but the fact that I wrote the song, you know. Uh, that's it, excellent. It was Having just, him sing your stuff is great. Yeah, it was just unbelievable. And he added the word magic, which I didn't have. It wasn't a lyric. <laughs> had, to, had to get it on brand. He the word magic in there. Yeah, get the word magic or rainbow it, or something in there makes yeah. it a little more it, deal. It, no, it worked. It worked. It was perfect. You know, I <laughs> yeah. forgot what word he took out, but he put, then there's magic. <laughs> you know, was that? That's great. It makes it, a, you know, his imprint is in that song. I mean, yeah. but even with his singing, but now with that addition of that word. Yeah, even though I didn't give him a writing credit for the word magic. Well, yeah, one <laughs> word, that's not necessary. You don't have to give him a writing credit well, for that. One word, you know, come on. Yeah. But, you know, speaking <laughs> of, of Ronnie, and you mentioned Vivian uh, Campbell, yeah. uh, and, of course, there was Jimmy Bain was one of the other organizers. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but 35 years ago, you went into the studio almost to the day. I believe it was last weekend. was the 35 anniversary of you going into the studio with those guys and like 30 other guys to do the oh, Hear and Aid uh, yep. song. And, and what an all-star lineup that was. And those people who joined Ronnie on that track were all handpicked by him. Those were people he obviously thought highly of. And you, you were one of those guys on the, on the track with – with them again, at 35 years ago, almost to the day you were recording that with Ronnie. Any memories of the hearing hear and aid uh, stars song? You know, it, it's. I just did an interview with somebody else about it because there's a whole. Everybody wants to know. To this day, it's like you said. It's just the anniversary of it, and um, it was it was an amazing uh, day. You know, it was, I think it was. I went there for two days. It was at A and M Studios, which I don't know if you're familiar. A and in L A. In Los Angeles, yeah. yeah. And Herb Albert used to own at the time. He owned that studio, wow. and then a lot of people are not going to know who Herb Albert is. But I love Herb Albert. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Tijuana Brass. Tijuana Brass, yeah. But um, and the thing was, I was staying in a hotel, the Holiday Inn, or right near. Uh, it's a. It's, I don't know if it's still the Holiday Inn. And, but, you know, they put us up at the Holiday Inn. Uh, they, I had to fly in for that because I was on tour. We were on tour with Iron Maiden. And uh, Adrian and, um, and Dave had played on it too. So, I, you know, I ran into them there. And, uh, but it was funny because I was hanging out with Nikki Six a lot at that time. Right. And Nikki Six picked me up to, and took me there because he was, you know, I mean, wow. he was, he, so, and we went down in a Jeep, like down Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> in, in an open Jeep. And this is in the 80s and, you know, and Motley Crue. And, People and, knew who you guys were, right? Yeah. And, and I said, like, this is not very low key, is it? <laughs> like, you know, right. Traveling down. But it was, you know, it, it's funny because it, I just didn't think much of it at the time. Now that I think of it, I goes like, oh, I, you know, I wish I could have appreciated that a little more than, uh, you know, I just kind of just said, felt that was very normal, you know? Yeah. Um, right. That's, because, that's cool. Yeah, because I just, you know, at that time, we always kind of knew each other. We were working together in some way or another, you know, and uh, and all the people that were there, it was just, it was, it was a great time, you know? Uh, I don't think, I didn't really need, I kind of maybe took it for granted a little bit because right. I just thought this is the way everybody does this, you know, and, and now I'm looking back and going, that was quite an accomplishment to put, to get all those guys together. And they all just yeah. said, yeah, and went in a heartbeat, you know, right. luckily enough, um, was I, I don't think I was in, I, I wasn't staying in Los Angeles. I was on tour with Maiden and I had to fly in from somewhere and stay. And luckily we had a couple of days off. And then, oh, cool. you know, and the Maiden guys, I was there when the Maiden guys did their thing. And I said, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow because we went back on tour the next day. So it was oh, wow. a great story, uh, Eddie. Wow. And I think that the, the reason that everybody did it is when somebody like Dio asked you to do it, 
you just say yes, no matter what it is. If they say you're in the middle of a tour, you got to fly cross country, you, everybody will just do it for him. Not that many people. Like I, people would probably do it for Ozzy and Theo, uh, maybe Helford. You know, there's a few so Ronnie, different people. Yeah, you know, especially Ronnie, Ronnie just had that, you know, that charisma, you know, and of course his talent, his voice was, you know, just the most. And, you know, the whole thing, when when he agreed to do my song, he wasn't, he didn't have cancer yet. You know, we didn't know that he was, I didn't know that was going to happen, you know? Right, right. And after that, I just, it just, it, it was so, I, I just took it so deeply. I was like, I can't believe that he's gone, you know, and, and he sang on my, my album, you know, it was, right, right. I just had so much more appreciation for it and just realizing like the loss was, you know, it was a lot deeper for me because. Yeah, yeah I know, can imagine. But... He had done something just out of the kindness of his heart, you know, um, and yeah. I mean, he didn't want, I mean, he didn't even ask me for money. I mean, I wow. sent him something because I just said, I'm, there's, I'm, there's no way I'm not going to send you something, give it a charity, whatever. But I, you know, I really appreciate you doing this. And I'm, you know, I'm going to pay you something. As soon as I got a little something from the record company, I definitely sent something right. as well. But, uh, huh. but well, that was, that was really cool. That's the kind of guy he was, you know, just, he would help you out. You know, he would just say, Hey, you're doing something. I know you, he knows how tough it is sometimes. People don't realize that how tough, especially when you're doing a solo thing and you're part of a band, people don't realize how hard it is to do your own thing. Yeah, right, you know, right. You can just go out there and do it and like everybody's going to show up, but it just doesn't work that way. Right on. Yeah, and no doubt. to kind of uh, segue off of that, you know, there's been, you mentioned Nikki Six, yeah. uh, Motley Crue, of course, had done a farewell tour a number of years ago and you know signed contracts saying they would never get back together oh, and yeah. now <laughs> they're, they're back together and they were at least supposed to do this stadium tour which i'm i'm assuming is not going to happen at this no, point. It, it definitely all got put off like with Def Leppard and poison him yeah. yeah yeah and you know we, we've time and time again we hear these bands and artists say this is the last tour ever and then they, they're back. And we've heard Twisted Sister say that, of course, too. Do you ever imagine that there could be a time where Twisted Sister says, hey, we've been away a number of years, and let's go, let's go give the fans one more round of this stuff? You know, I never say never. Right. Because, uh, good, good. Because you never know. It's just right. like, I'll never do it. You, that's <laughs> you know, right. you, it depends right. on the situation. I mean, you, you always miss it, no matter how much you've, done it and you know, i mean we you know we the whole comeback for four, four we were like together for 14 years we did a lot of shows in the last 14 years and we were headlining all the shows it was like we were bigger now than we were in the 80s in the 80s we were wow, wow. Playing, you know and yeah. so it was it was a great time but you know I, I think it just got to a point where we just felt like maybe it was like Seinfeld, uh, I don't know. right? So I don't like just go out on a high note, you know what I mean? Yeah, go out and top, go out and top. And uh, but you know, as far as that goes, the Who blows everybody away. They're the biggest liars of all time. Yeah. <laughs> I remember they, they, they like ninety and still like be touring. Yeah, and I remember the Who in 1982. This is the last tour yeah. we'll ever do, and then they <laughs> and they did it again in the 80s. It was like, no, this is the last tour we'll ever do. Yeah, and, like 40 tours later, they're, and they're still saying no, but this is definitely this is definitely the last tour. We we mean it this time. Like, so if anybody's going to complain, they better talk to the Who first because you know, right, right, they have well, really. For you know. For one, I'm happy when bands decide to come back, even if they at one point said they weren't, because yeah. it's going to uh, give me another chance to see them. Now, Eddie, I have uh, two things I want to um, mention. And one of them is to, just to tell some fans about something that they might not know about. You did, because I was there, a great performance with Ace Frehley at Carnegie Hall. Yeah. And I know the story, but why don't you guys tell the, why don't you, Eddie, tell everybody the story? Yeah, well, it was a benefit. Uh, it was about sobriety, you know. Um, and actually, the, the police officer that arrested Ace was there. Uh, right. During that, that whole big thing that with... Uh, Jimmy Genter. 
with mm-hmm. Anton, you know, that time that big accident. That, uh, <laughs> but um, so it was, it was a fun day. It was a great time, uh, you know, and, you know, we just played acoustic guitars. Um, we did New York Groove and the song off the last album, uh, one of the acoustics. So we did one song acoustically and Who one. Was that? And we had these little Vox amps and, you know, I still look at the video and I go like, it, it sounded so cool. It was just these little Vox amps with just a little distortion and, you know, we did New York Groove and, and you know, I mean, I love Ace. He's been a good friend of mine for so long, but, you know, it was fun to do that together because we had never done that and it was a charity and it was, it did well. I mean, it was sold out, you know. And, uh, yeah, and it was at, it was at Carnegie Hall and it was, a, it, there was a, a Carnegie Hall has a couple of different venues inside. And so it was a historic place. Yeah. Um, it, it was just a great event. And what I thought was cool is that Ace wanted to do it with someone. And out of anybody in the, you know, he could have picked, he said, I want to get Eddie on this. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was great because, uh, you know, I had, I had to learn the song because we only had one day. Like to, so I had to learn the new song. Um, I think it was a little below the angels, maybe. But. Yeah, the angels, right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, so I had to learn the song, you know. And I like to, I like to really learn a song when I go in. Someone, especially we're going to play at a Carnegie Hall, you know. Right, like, right. You got to like nail it. So I had to really, you know, that the night before I just went over it plenty of times, and I went to Ace's house. We went over it a few times, and you know, we just went down to the city and banged it out, and it was great. It was a great time. Great. Yeah, it was re- it was really a great event, and yeah. uh, that was something I always remember. Um, now, um, I, I want to uh, just ask if you have any memories of some of those. I'm going to go way, way back, way, way back. I, w- I was watching that the Twisted Sister movie that uh, that is on, I think, Netflix. And uh, what I really liked was seeing the footage of you guys when you went to Europe on those first European tours that you did, and you're yeah. playing big festivals, and it just Seems so cool. I first saw you guys in 1982 on the You Can't Stop Rock and Roll Tour. And this was maybe even before that when you guys first went to Europe. Yeah, I think that was with Blackfoot and Crocus, I think, uh, when we did a tour like that tour. Can't Stop Rock and Roll. That was a tough tour. But, um, yeah, so what was the question about Europe? You said, so was- just said, tell, what was it like when you guys went to Europe for the first time and you guys are playing these, you know, festivals? Oh, you know, it was great. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole thrill. Like when you first coming up, you know, sometimes I think people get a bit jaded once they get to a certain level in, in, of success. But the, um, you know, the whole grind of getting there uh, is, probably one of the, it's the most thrilling time because, you know, you're kind of like scratching your way up there. And, and, uh, I mean, not that it's, it, it's, it's tough cause it kind of sucks. I remember like three of us in one room, we, we have to stay in motels, three, three guys in, in a room and we have to take turns using a cot, you know, and wow. certain guys snored, people farted. I mean, it was, you know, it wasn't, <laughs> People think like, oh, it's this luxury tour. Like, oh, you guys are going all these places, and, and you know, there was all us and the crew in one bus. You know, um, wow. And it, when you say that, people think it's it's like you thought. It, believe me, I did. When I was going to the store and I got the, you know, uh, you can't stop rock and roll album. I thought you guys were you know, superstars, like in my hometown, <laughs> I didn't know you were staying three in a room. You know what I mean? So yeah. anytime under the blade, I, I was like, Oh, I got their album. These guys are super rock stars. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're putting out the music, but the whole touring part of it is, it, you know, it, it was really tough those during those days. It wasn't until stay hungry that things kind of like got better, you know, right, that, right. that album you know, changed everything uh, for us. But you know those those first couple of albums, and it's, this is not just us. It's like every band, right. has every band, story, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, and even even when things are good, it's still so tough. Like the traveling part of it, because you're not there to you're not there to like you're not on vacation. You know, you're there right. to play. So you got to think. You got you can't really go out. You can't do certain things because you got to play the next day. You know. Yep. 
at least, you know, I mean, it was kind of easier in the thirties when you're in your twenties. Yeah. When you're in your thirties, right. Like, like kind of miss go out and, you know, blow it out for a night and like the next day you <laughs> pull it off. But you right. know, when you get a little older, you got to say like, uh, no, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> you know, have a good time at the bar though. <laughs> right on. So Eddie, I, I know, I know in that movie that John was referencing, it goes into the whole thing with, with Motorhead and Lemmy. So we don't, I don't know, probably need to retell that story, but didn't you guys back in those days to uh, tour with a very young Metallica at some point? Well, we did a few shows with Metallica. A few shows. Okay. Uh, I remember the show in Holland, the first time I heard Metallica and you know, I didn't get it. I was, yeah, they were just they were playing. They were doing at that time. They were really like thrash speed metal. You know? Right. I think that was on their first album, if I'm first not. Album, yeah, yeah, the Kill 'Em All record, because they thanked Twisted Sister on the second record. I know that. Yeah, and I mean, it was it was fun. I think um, I'm not sure if, who headlined, and we, we did a few shows together. It wasn't a tour, but um, they had just kind of come up on the scene, and and you know, I said, "Wow, this is." different you know it was i mean they i know that once they got a little more commercial people got pissed off it's amazing how people get mad when a band becomes really successful right, right. <laughs> yeah god damn you for being so well, i like them when they you know were making nothing you know yeah <laughs> where they were suffering i, I was into that eddie i i, 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 I love this good. other voice that you by the way just i love you have a second voice when you're saying the long island guy doesn't know where um you know, Rockland County is you got a di you have a different voice. You should do characters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the Metallica. Back to Metallica. Yeah, so the whole thing with uh, yeah, the first time I heard them, I was like, wow, this. I said those guys are like because you know I never heard anybody the, the, all the riffs and everything was so fast. They were you know they were really speed metal at the time. Um, so you know I didn't. Uh, then later on, they became like this massive band. And, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm happy for them, you know? Yeah. But we never really got to know each other very well. Uh, we only did a few shows together. And it was a very, you know, it was just cordial kind of, hey, how you doing? The hallway thing. Nothing. It wasn't like when we toured with Maiden, where we were on almost a year together. You know, you get to know each other so well. So, it's, you know. But, uh, That's the first time I saw you guys on that Maiden tour, and it was yeah. one of the only times I saw an opening act, and every seat in the arena was was filled. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And, and I very rarely saw that. Now that, that was one of my probably my fourth or fifth time going to a concert, but I, I re always remember that, and it was an explosive show. Yeah. Even a band like Maiden, I mean, you, you, you gave them a run for their money. It was a, a tough act to follow. Well, it, it's, you know, I, I noticed that too. Like, when 8 o'clock came, the place was packed, and people weren't just walking around, drinking sodas, talking to each other. You know, they were there to see us too. You know, it was there to see That's both cool. bands. That's cool. Because we were breaking big. That's when Stay Hungry came out. And, you know, we were just really breaking big at the time. And Maiden, you know, didn't limit us at all. They gave us full That's life, cool. everything, sound, whatever. And we used to fire the audience up, but they loved it. Some bands were like, hey, man, you know, don't, they can, we're not going to let them look good. You know, we're going to cut right, them right. off. And, and a lot of that stuff happened, too. You know, we never did that to people. You know, at least not that I know of, you know, because I didn't like, shit like that. I thought it was, you know, it's not fair. You know, don't limit other right. bands. But bands do that for opening acts. And yep. uh, because they don't want them to sound as good as them or look right, like, right. They don't have the same lights and they stuff. don't want them to yeah, I was gonna say the same lights they say you can only use twenty five percent of the lighting system. You can't turn the sound up loud. Right. I mean, now it's different because there's so much going on with LEDs and big screens and the sh shows now are like so over the top with production. Right. And, you know, back then it was basic lights and you know, it was all for nails. It was, wasn't, you know, there was, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know, nothing was motorized. You didn't have all these lights, right. and lasers or all that stuff that's, that's around. So, you know, it was, lights were pretty basic, but important too. And if you were limited, you didn't look as good. You know, and but Maiden was always really cool with us. Uh, That's you know, cool to know. That's nice cool to, to know. hear. And we fired up 
and they would love the fact that the, they would come out and the audience was so fired up already. Right. And when they hit the stage, they were like, wow, you know. Ready to go. Right. So yeah. they loved it, which is unusual. Most bands don't. Right. You know, they don't want you to do that to an audience. But for Maiden, because they could take it, they could keep it going. You know what I mean? They were just saying, okay, you, you lit right. the fire. We're going to keep, you know. Yeah, they're going to rock going. it and the fans are going to go uh, crazy yeah. for Maiden as well. But. Yeah. So, Eddie, I had, I had one uh, question for you. I know we've almost had you a half hour at this point, so I don't want to keep you all night. But I, I always wanted to ask you, and I've interviewed you a number of times, and I've never asked you about the uh, Come Out and Play record. Now, obviously, Stay Hungry just exploded all over MTV. Uh, you know, like we just said, filling arenas uh, on that tour with, with Maiden and with others. Um, then you guys put out a, a radically different sounding record, at least I, I felt it was as a fan, come out and play, uh, which I, I, I liked, but it was a, a quite a departure uh, sonically and even song wise from Stay Hungry. What was the thinking uh, to go after the smashing success of Stay Hungry? Why, right. you know, let's do another album just like Stay Hungry. Instead of doing that, which in my view would have been the safe route, you guys went somewhere else musically. What was the thinking behind well, that? I don't know if it was so much the thinking, but we, we used Dieter Dirks. You know, I, mean, right. I love Dieter. I think he's a great producer. But, you know, we had used Tom Worman for Stay Hungry and so did Motley Crue. But Motley Crue, and I don't know, they were they stayed with with Worman for the next album or two, I believe, after uh, Shout of the Devil. But, um, you know, I would have liked, I wanted to stay with Tom Worman personally, but because I think he, whatever happened with Stay Hungry, he kind of nailed it. And, you know, like I said, well, if this is working, let's not change it, you know, but, Right. You know, for, for certain reasons, we, uh, you know, what, we went with a different producer, and I think that did change the sound a bit. It, you know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't as radical as um, as when we did. Um, you know, the, I remember I, can, I forgot the album after. Love this for suckers. Love this for suckers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, so so that you know that was to me that was a lot different because right. Bo, Hill, Bo Hill again we changed producers. You know, uh, I was to me come out and play wasn't that different. I thought it was in the same uh, vein. I just thought that we released the wrong single. Okay. I, I thought leader of the pack was not, you know. Um, like, you know, crew, they're smoking in the boys' room. And it, right. It and leader of the pack, I just, for some reason, it just didn't work. And I, th I think that was part of the wrong, uh, and also be cruel to your school. Um, you know, because at first, when we, I thought it was be cool to your school. I said, well, that's nice with the song about being cool. To the <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. I went, all of a sudden, I get, get the, I said, you're saying cruel? <laughs> cruel? I said, that's not, man, that's not going to fly, you know? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> there's no teen spirit in that. <laughs> it's like teen yeah, spirit. Like, cruel, why, why? I thought you were saying cool. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, maybe I should have paid more attention until I saw it in writing. Like, uh, was, you know, I didn't complain <laughs> about it. And it was a bit too late when the album came out, you know? Yeah. Right. People like silly, little silly things that happen. Right. That's yeah. funny. That, that's good. Eddie, I mean, we, we can talk to you all day. Eddie. You're a great guest, A. And um, oh, I, before we let you go, I want to ask you, Eddie, I think this is maybe a year ago. Did you really become a grandfather? You look like you're younger than me. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, he's now uh, a year and four months old. That's awesome. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. Yeah. His name is yeah. Levi. Yeah, a little boy. My son Levi, nice. Baby boy. My parents' neighbor's name is Levi, and he's a little kid that they hang, they he comes over and helps my dad with stuff. Yeah, I thought it was like, you know, at first I thought, you know, the song, Eva, Eli's come in. I thought, and I said, like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I, he was coming over, and I went, e Levi's coming. And then all of a sudden, my son says, he's no, he's singing Eli, not e Levi. <laughs> Because I put okay. the video on like a Three Dog Night thing, song. Right? Yeah, I love it. And I was like, oh shit. Sorry. 
But I, I still sing Levi's coming. So. I, I like that. I like it. But, so Eddie, when you come back to New York and you visit your brother, you got to let me know and we'll, we'll hang out here. Definitely. Or, New way, Jersey, I, I mean. New York, New Jersey. Set, but the guitar setup behind you looks pretty awesome. I know. Yeah, thanks. You can check them. You can play them. You can borrow them. Whatever you need here. But I love the lighting. I got too. all my Les Pauls. Um, and then I got, so this is the Gibson Les Paul area and a couple of SGs in the room behind this. I've got uh, just more Gibsons, but different shapes like Explorers, Vs, and then I got some Strats in there. You know what, Eddie? I wanted to ask you, did you, you know, uh, when we did the Fuse show together, um, I had a chance to hold one of your great bullseye guitars, but I saw uh, that you had one that I think was it a Wayne Charvel? Yeah, that's the one that I played at that yeah. when we did, when we did um, Paranoid, I think we did one. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, it, that you know, I looked at that video a couple of months ago. I, I thought we killed it. You know, that's, We totally did. We totally did. That was... You know, that was so great. much fun, yeah. And thank yeah. you for doing that with us. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Remember, Richard Christie on the drums with us. Uh, everybody was great. I mean, uh, and... You know, I go back, we really nailed it. I, I mean, it was like, and I remember feeling sick and I thought, I called John and I said, man, I'm not feeling too good. I was like, I felt like my, my, I remember. Rolling, I felt, and, you know, I wasn't, but I did, you know, I, I knew the song. I did take time to learn the song right. And I was confident with that. I just didn't, physically didn't feel good. I had a cold, but, you know, it, it kicked ass. So, it did. Right on. I, I remember that now, Eddie, that you called and said, I'm not feeling that good. And I said, Eddie, you got to come. You got to come. come, man. We can't get, do it. You, you got to come. You're the... I said, I'll, and, be, no. okay, I'll, I'll be down. You know. but, and uh, Twisted Hot you. Sauce still still going strong. I, I yeah, loved that. Uh, I had the peach flavor. I got to order more of that, actually, which I, I loved. Yeah, it's doing, it's doing okay. You know, I mean, it's a lot of it's hot sauce out there. So it's... Uh, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe I should... Team up with uh, Cheech Marin or something. <laughs> right. TwistedHotSauce.com <laughs> is, is the site <laughs> for Eddie's yeah, Everybody hot, go out and stuff. get that. We will post yeah. the link in our podcast show notes. Okay, so hopefully we can get some sales on that hot sauce. I love hot yeah. sauce and I love your hot sauce. Eddie. Thanks, man. Thanks. Great seeing you guys again. You know. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely, Eddie. It's so cool. We, we got to catch up more often, even if it's not on video here, you know? Definitely. Yeah. And say, uh, say hi to Ace for me. I have to give him a call again. I, I will. I, Ace is in Jersey now. He, oh, no. He's, back. Oh, right. he's back in Jersey. He, he, he's, <laughs> yep. He sent me a picture. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. I got it. <laughs> awesome. So, Eddie, Eddie, thank you so much. We, I really appreciate it. Mark really appreciates it. Pleasure, You're man. one of the Talking Metal family, without question. And yeah. to, not to mention, you're one of my favorite guitar players, and Twisted oh, Sister was you, one of my all-time favorite bands. When I, when I went to Berkeley, I wrote on the thing. They said, list three people that you love, and I put Twisted Sister. <laughs> the three artists that you love, right? Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Three artists, three bands. Yeah. yeah you guys kick, you know, you guys have really good players as well. So I mean, it's always a pleasure. Ah, thank to you. Together, man. Yeah. yeah, well, thank and thank you for all the great music. First time I saw you guys was on that World Slavery Tour with Maiden. I saw you many yeah. times through the years. Uh, one, one of the, it wasn't the final time, but one of the final times was at Heavy Montreal. You guys were so good. It was like still light out when you took the stage. And that was the same weekend Metallica played. That was such a, a right before Slayer, I think you guys played. I don't know if you remember that show, but that was insane. The place was going nuts. Canada, yeah, we did. We had a lot of great shows in Canada. I mean, there was like thirty-five thousand people there for you guys. It yeah, was, that was insane. Was that you talking about the one with Scorpions or? No, that was Metallica, Slayer. Um, I'm trying to think who else was on that year. I, I know you guys played like right before Slayer, I believe. Yeah, um, we, we did a sh that's we because we did a show with Scorpions there, and they shut down the whole. T city it was, it wow. was 85,000 wow. they, they were thinking maybe 30,000 people would show up and it was 85,000 people showed up wow oh, man uh, and yeah was, I think that was previous that that was that, that was before the 2014 one that I saw but that's yeah. that's amazing cool. what, a, what a story that's so cool Eddie uh, to see yeah, you yeah. guys and Scorpio and... like you know Canada was great for us a great place uh, yeah we absolutely we playing there you know I mean uh, every I mean I could talk about every, every country you know or south america none of it, you know yeah oh, the people in south america love heavy metal and it, it, absolutely i think that you guys could get back together anytime you want and and play in any country 
and you'll have people there. That's I honestly think so. That's great. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. And I know so. I, I know so. <laughs> if we ever get back together. Like I said, yeah. I know well, well, Yeah, we're not trying to make you <laughs> say any secret stuff or anything. We just say we would love it. But yeah. if, if Twisted Sister doesn't do anything, we're, we'll support any of your solo stuff and yeah. come to see you do any kind of live music that you're doing. Yeah, I'll go Absolutely. out there and I'll get a motorized thing. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and Eddie, I can't wait till you get your, your I love you, you got a little Marshall stack, that's totally cool, and <laughs> some gear me. there. <laughs> cool. So Eddie, thank you so much again for coming on, and we will keep in touch. And next time in, I'm in Nashville, I'm gonna call you, and next time you're up here, you definitely got a call, because we're yeah, gonna get your brother up. and definitely. his wife, and we're gonna hang out. Okay. Take care, guys. Great All right. You. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks so much, Eddie. You well. Take it easy. Peace out. Cool. Peace out. All right. Legendary guitar player Eddie Ojeda from Twisted Sister here on Talking Metal. Always great to connect with Eddie, John. And who do we yeah. have uh, coming up in just a few minutes? Coming up in about seven minutes, we've got Jeremy Asbrock from the Ace Fraley Band. And, and Gene Simmons uh, Band, too, and right? Gene Simmons Band, too. And Gene Simmons Band. And right I think on. we still got it. Eddie, we still got you. <laughs> I'm trying to log out here. I'm not... Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to do it. Uh, okay, I got you're it. stuck on Talking Metal Forever. That's okay. If you want to stick around. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just stay in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. You get it. Take it. See you later, Eddie. All right. I think it's going to end Hold on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Oh, there. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <That's what. laughs> Eddie, I uh, love Eddie. He is so cool. Let's see. Why don't you hold up your comment. mask, John? You showed a, a cool oh, mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, earlier. yeah. Thank you. I want to thank Jason Poole, uh, also known as Jason the Cop, um, who is friends with the Heartless uh, Gang. And he sent Heartless, me this uh, insane mask. Now, check this out. Ace is Jason Heartless, of course, is on our. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. it's a kiss uh, mask. Now, I, I saw actually somebody else online was making kiss masks. Actually, Steve Stevens' wife was, was wow. advertising. She was making them out of that same Michael fabric. Yeah. Um, so I, I wonder, like, that must be some type of fabric you can buy, I'm guessing. It, it must be, but it's really nice. Like, what I'm telling you is that this mask is like, I feel like it's like a dress mask. Like, if you put on a tuxedo, you put this mask on. And I got an amazing mask last week, and now I've got this mask this week. So uh, this is the thing. Every week, maybe I will feature a new mask. And right. Jason Poole is so great. We're going to have a show. It's called uh, Senior, Junior, and the Cop. Uh, I'm going to be like the Charlie of Charlie's Angels. I'm going to send yeah, Jason you mentioned, you mentioned that in the last, out. last episode. Yeah. Yeah. And Jason Poole is going to be uh, the third Jason in it. So it's going to be great. Jason, thank you. I was going to say this up top, and then Eddie popped in early, which is great. Right, and right uh, so, so that's awesome. Um, Eddie, is, Eddie, that Eddie is great. He's, a, he's one of those guys, easy to talk to, um, yeah. and humble, and always brings the great stories. I, I, seriously, I, I could have spoken with him for another hour. I know, he's we could have just easy. kept talking. I'm I didn't mean to, to say, come on. I, I mean, I actually liked uh, Come Out and Play. I mean, there was... The, yeah, and I, I think I, I think what there were some very hard, like the title track, for example, is a very fierce, hard, and heavy song. But it definitely was more musically diverse than maybe "Stay Hungry." And I, I think the fact that they did choose those two songs as the the lead off singles may have uh, not been the best choice in retrospect. It's right. interesting. Yeah. That, the "Cruel to Your School" was kind of like Alice Cooper's return, you know. Because mm -hmm. Alice, a lot of people, you know, it's funny, like these younger kids and stuff, uh, they don't a lot of times recognize that Alice was was MIA. I mean, I didn't really know much about Alice uh, in, in the first half of the 80s. You know, it, he was a big before my time in the 70s. Um, but then... I didn't really know much about Alice. You know, I, I loved Kiss right. as a little kid, but then suddenly it was like, oh, well, this guy, Alice Cooper, he's a guest on the Twisted Sister record. And I was like, oh, I kind of heard about him. You know, like I didn't really know much about him. That was my kind of first introduction to Alice on that right. record. Um, people were like, well, he, he's 
was D's big influence, Alice Cooper, you know? So I, I, right. it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I can see why they wanted to put that out as a single because Alice was a part of it. And But what I'm saying you know, is in 85, Alice was not really the star oh, that yeah, he you're, Oh, so was, you're saying you know? he wasn't that as big, like the, the people who liked heavy metal in the 80s might not have known the history of Alice right at that time. Right, right. 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 Yeah, but, but I don't know. What do I know? But I might grab another no, no, beer. You are right. You know what? I, if I appear sidetracked, it's because I am trying to figure out these Facebook comments. And the problem is somehow they're, you can't scroll. But right now uh, we have 35 comments. Hey, we've got Jeremy Asbrock. <laughs> oh, there he is. Jeremy. Hey. Oh, yeah. I love that you uh, got it uh, horizontal. That's cool. And you've got a great A shirt. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I want to. Hello. <laughs> you know, everybody sees the stuff I wear on stage. The eagle wings. Sometimes I was wearing the uh, skull on the jeans. Uh, that, 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 that's our yep. friends at Click Tee, and uh, everybody, any Kiss fan should check out Click Tee because it's a way of like having a Kiss shirt without having a Kiss shirt, and like Kiss Correct. fans see it and go, "Yes, we know what that is." And, and really, and cool. Jeremy, so, uh, let, let's this, do this an intro. Yeah, let's do an official introduction, John. Yeah. So right now we have Jeremy Asbrock, who uh, just popped up. Oh, here he's back. We have Jeremy yeah. Asbrock from the Ace Frehley Band, the Gene Simmons Band, the Rock and Roll Residency, the Talisman, and many other groups. How are you, Jeremy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a few minutes early, too. Uh, one thing that I beat into my son's head is, if you're not early, you're late. So I love I'm it. Like, so oh, thank good. you. Thank you, Jeremy. And I love that Ace I'm two shirt. minutes early. I, well, that's totally yeah. fine with us. Now, let me tell the, the viewers what that is. Now, back in the early, early Kiss days, Ace had that shirt. I don't even think that was, I don't even know if that was part of an official Kiss costume, but he, it, it may have been. Jeremy, There's a picture, I think, of Ace wearing Yeah, yeah, shirt. there's one yeah, photo. Yeah. I think it's from like 1973. So. I think so. And Jeremy, you also have a shirt with the, the wings that was from 1973 yeah. that was really cool and uh you, you always had cool shirts when you when you're on stage yeah it's a at a click t check it out like google okay. it look it up on facebook clicks c-l-i-c-k you know he's got a uh, the the lightning bolt thing from the elder creek right here uh and and uh, I don't know. There's there's a whole bunch of different things he's doing. He's got a, a new Paul Stanley Rose shirt. So oh, wow. very cool. Yeah, man. So Jeremy, Kiss you're in Nashville. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. So let's move on. No, you you were you're, so let me let me ask you this, Jeremy. It looks like you're outdoors. You're in Nashville. Yeah. We just had Eddie, and I like you wrote Eddie Fingers of Jada um, on, yeah. and he's also down in Nashville. I, I, I heard that. You know, I read that uh, about a year ago or something, but I forgot all about it. And, uh, and you know, we've been touring with Ace, so I didn't really get out much. But I, I was watching and, and listening the whole time. I'm like, oh, man, he's in Nashville. Shit. He could, like, live four houses down from me, and I didn't even know it. So, uh, man, <laughs> right. you're going to have to hook us up after we get I done absolutely will. I will hook you guys up, and you guys got to get together and jam. And yeah. it, so, now, that'd, that'd be great. You, uh, Mark, I'm going to let you ask some questions, but yeah, yeah. let me just start out by saying, Jeremy, you were, you guys, you and your whole gang down there are like the kings of rock in Nashville. Tell everybody about that. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guess we are, uh, you know, we, I think so. Well, thank you. You know, I'm, there, there's lots of rock and rollers here, uh. You know, uh, so uh, originally, before I had met Ryan, uh, you know, Phil and I have been best friends for almost 20 years now. And, you know, we didn't even play music together at first. That was just sort of something that happened after about 10 or 11 years. And then we started doing tribute bands before tribute bands were like a thing to do. And, you know, it was just for shit that we liked, like Kiss and Aerosmith and Thin Lizzy and, and, and stuff like that. And uh, then I met Ryan. He had a, a band in town called Big Rock Show that did like 80s metal jukebox stuff. And they were asked to do the Kiss Cruise, the first Kiss Cruise, and their guitar player couldn't do it. And, you know, actually they asked Philip first, and Philip toured with a country artist at the time, and he couldn't do it. 
And I was living with him at the time. And, you know, I was obviously like the next guy. And, and, and then I met Ryan and, and then we started playing a lot. And, and, uh, and then Philip and I started doing the rock and roll residency. And that was sort of like crossing the streams because Ryan became like one of our, you know, usual suspects that, cause we'd have lots of guest singers every show. And that was when, you kind of learn how many rock and rollers there were in town and how many like, you know, noteworthy musicians were living here. And it just sort of seized this thing. And like the timing was perfect. And it was just like this scene that grew and grew and grew. And then we outgrew the, the pub we played at and had to move to a bigger place. And, and then, you know, all these other people started moving to town and they'd hear about it. And man, it was just like the happiest accident that could ever happen. Wow. Are we the Kings? So cool. I don't know. But uh, do people know who we are? And, you know, it kind of blows my mind when we go to a place like Japan and I see the rock and roll residency shirts. And, you know, uh, man, one time I played the whiskey and this guy I'd never met. He's like, hey, man, aren't you the rock and roll residency? I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. Are you from Nashville? He's like, no, I'm from here. I've just heard of you. Wow. And then uh, wow. I, I was on the Monsters of Rock cruise this past February and uh I was talking to Blossy Lies from Slaughter, and he's just like, oh, man, yeah, you're the residency guy. And I'm like, wow, you've heard of us? He's like, yeah, man, I, I've seen your stuff. And I'm just like, how? <laughs> it, so. That's great. Well, you get because you guys are great. That's why. That's why. So, so Jeremy, before, before you were playing with Ace, obviously you were playing with Gene. Let's talk about how that all came about and – when you specifically I'm wondering like when you first got word from Gene like hey I'm gonna do some solo shows and I I, I want you in the band I want this ba you, uh, your band okay. to back well, us up. Well, Gene, Gene, Gene didn't hire me really so uh you know big rock show that I played in with Ryan we had done six six kiss cruises and you know the big stage is right in front of the master suite so I, I know he had heard us a, a few times by that point and and ryan's good friends with doc so you know he had a you know you guys know ryan he's got a great reputation and had a great reputation with doc so i'm sure they had heard ryan's name and ryan had met them numerous times over the years and, and gene hit ryan up to put together a band and uh that was on kiss cruise six or seven whatever year they did creatures of the deep and, uh, you know, I was obviously a shoe in for that because I played with Ryan and, and we're kiss nerds together. And, 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 you know, Phillip's our brother. And, you know, we're all like best friends under kiss. You know, that's how we all became friends because that's how I met Philip. Philip came to see a band I was playing with that he had read about. He was in the front of Love Gun shirt before you could get that shit at Walmart. And I'm just like, I'm going to talk to that guy after the show. That guy's right. cool. So... You know, uh, and at first, Gene wasn't going to play. He was just going to sing. So, you know, we were going to pass around the bass and two guitar players, and then uh, good sense prevailed, and Ryan told him he really needed to play bass. Right. And he's just like, <laughs> okay. And, you know, we weren't going to, like – Ryan wasn't going to tell one of us we couldn't do it, so, you know, Gene didn't care. So then it just became three guitar players, and, and he fell in love with that. He – thought it was like very uh symphonic you know just three guitars and that was how that happened like ryan had a good reputation with the camp he had heard big rock you know ryan at the very least was a good capable player and singer and we got together and rehearsed one time and that was and we really it the first gig we did this corporate event in Vancouver and we did a lot of stacks and stuff. We didn't, we hardly even played any kiss. And, uh, wow. we did that. It led to the Cleveland show. And then we did all that rare kiss stuff. And then that broke the internet and then the bookings just started coming. And it right. was originally supposed to be like six shows and it, it turned into about 30. Well, one of the cool things I, I love uh, about you guys as a unit, in, and this was something bef when, you, when we were talking about having you guys uh, play with Ace, is that Ryan told me, before you guys went to Japan, he said, 
look, no matter what, we're a package deal. So um, it, it doesn't matter how many guitar players there are. We, we either do it as all of us or none of us. And I, I love yeah, that you and, guys and are that. You know what, man? I, I was afraid of that. Like originally when we did the Australia thing, I'm like, man, Ace ain't going to want three guitars. That will like play bass because he did the math. <laughs> yeah. and I, was ner I, I was nervous because I knew Ryan wasn't going to be the one to go because he's the guy. Right. So I'm like, <laughs> fuck, man. Fuck, it's going to be me. Shit. But <laughs> uh, and the thing that I think sold Ace on us was the, the backup vocals, man. Like, you know, like having right. all of that, that vocal power behind him. You know, he heard 2000 Man and he heard that three part harmony and was like, Right. Fuck yeah, man. All right. Yeah. I, I can dig this. Uh, and I don't know, man. We're all like very loyal in our friendship because, you know, we were all like buds before, you know, we were doing this. You know, Philip and I, especially, we were friends for 10 years before we ever know together. And, you know, I, I did join Big Rock Show and become friends with Ryan. But I mean, like, you know, we're all like best friends. We hang out and talk to each other. We talk to each other every day and we That's hang cool. out as often as possible, which hasn't been much lately, but you know, yeah. like otherwise, <laughs> you know, we're, we're the friends that we hang out with. So, you know, we got put on this great adventure together. I think that's kind of why the fans latched onto us because man, we are kiss fucking fans like yep. major <laughs> and, 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 you know, we've all been in musical situations and you become friends through the musical situation, but we were all like best friends that thrown into this together. And that's what makes it a little more so than just like hired individually and then becoming friends. Like, you know, you don't have to come back and tell your buddy about this cool adventure. Like we're on it together. And, and I really think the fans can see that. And you mentioned that, that you've played some, you know, deep cuts with, uh, with, with Gene. What songs that you've played with him have really been a thrill to play? Because, you know, songs like you've done Charisma. I mean, there's well, been some really know, the, deep the, cuts, you know? The really, the really cool thing about playing with, with, with Gene was is he was super open to suggestion and stuff. And after we did that first gig and we were doing shit like Got Love for Sale and Charisma and you know, like being such big fans, we're able to approach it as fans. Like I know what I want to see. Right. If I went to one of those shows. So it's real easy to like, you know, suggest stuff. And Gene was pretty open to it. And that was, and I got to give him credit for that. And, and even along the way, since we played together for like a year and a half, you know, you get an email one morning and it's like, can we do all, all the way tonight? And it's like, fuck yeah, we can do all the way tonight. Yeah. It's awesome. Right? That's great. That is awesome. Cool. And then yeah. at some point you you tr you transition into also being Ace's band and this happened wh where were you guys going? Was it Japan? Or? It, it, yeah. was, it was Australia was, and Japan. You know, they, uh yeah, but but it was kind of Australia that set that up because it was Gene and Ace together, you know. Right. So we were back Ace for his set and then back Gene for his. Uh, Japan just kind of worked out because that was added. You know, it's kind of flying. And if Ace is going to go to Japan after Australia, it just makes more sense financially right. to take us versus the guys he was working with. You know, I can't elaborate a lot on the the shift in players. You know, obviously John would be able to, and you know, we won't get into any of that. But you know, there were a lot of forces around. There was John. There was Keith LaRue. And look, man, you know, like Ace and Gene were real tight at that time, you know, despite what happened a couple months later. They were really, they were really tight at the time. And, you know, Gene was very influential in that decision. And uh, even, you know, a, a, a blonde haired female that shall be named, you know, I watched her watch our set with Ace and, and enjoy it a whole lot. So, you know, I, I'm sure even she, I don't know, there were just a lot of people around Ace saying, hey, man this might be a really good idea and I, I you know I, I know that the the kiss tour was on the horizon and you know gene was out for us man you know he didn't want us to like not work anymore and he 
I know he thought of what I did, and I, I will never, ever, ever forget. It's Sydney, Australia. After Ace is set, Gene pulls me into his dressing room. Ace is going to ask you to do the crew. I was like, well, how do you feel about that? He's like, I have no ego. Live and let live. And, and right. Actually, right. Ace didn't wind up asking us until we were in Japan, Tokyo. But, you know, I, I knew it was coming. Right. And look, man, you know, like, those are my two guys. Uh, when I got into KISS, I gravitated toward Gene and Ace. And, you know, I was around three years old when I got into KISS. I didn't wind up getting my first KISS record until I was about four. But, you know, I didn't know the difference between lead and bass guitar. I just saw guitars in both of their hands. And, like, I love those guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I know I was in second grade, Jeremy, when I first saw Kiss and my Aunt Joanne um, and my friend Mike Corsi uh, at school uh, showed me Kiss and uh, be between the both of them, I became a Kiss fanatic at a very young age too, seven or eight. So and Jeremy, besides Kiss, when you were growing up, what other musical influences were, were strong for you? Okay, well, I got him so young, you know, it took a minute to... Jeremy, you know what I think it is? I think when, when you're on the phone, if you're moving, the, the, the video signal on, and the audio signal break up. I think you might have to set the well, phone down. I was also sitting outside because, you know, I live in a small house with a family and a four-year-old, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. We're getting a little tour of the place. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, I was so young when I discovered Kiss that it, it took a little while to get into some other music. So the second band I ever got into was The Who. And uh, it, I, I heard you mention that 1982 tour earlier. So, yeah, you know, they had that HB, they had that HBO concert. Yeah, and my my brother told me he's like, hey, you know, they're in the Guinness Book of World Records as the latest band. I'm like, oh my god, I've got to see that. That was the so, Toronto show. That was I the Toronto the show. Two. Yeah, Maple Leaf Gardens. That's right. So uh, that was Van Halen. Uh, I got my first uh, boombox for Christmas in 1982. No, 1983, and. 1984 come out, had come out, and, you know, I, I found the rock radio station in town, 103 KDF, and, you know, Jump was a new single, and I loved it. And Van Halen was coming to town, like, you know, a couple weeks later, so they were playing the whole album, and I heard Panama, and it melted my fucking brain. So when I discovered Van Halen, then I discovered rock magazines like Circus and Hit Parader, and, you know, this is like 1984, and that's when rock blew up, man. It was like rats, scorpions, and fucking, you know, every, everything that came out in, in 1984. And, you know, I was, let's see, 84. I, I was nine years old, so I, I could read. Hi, there's my son, everybody. Hello. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised he, my he, kids he, haven't come down yet, but yeah. He, he, he graduated pre-K today, so. Oh, oh congratulations. Happy graduation. Congratulations. Yeah, they're saying congratulations to you. Okay, oh, that's so. enough of you. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to recount summer 84 here. So, you know, I was buying the oh, magazines God. and I was able to read. And man, that just kind of opened up this whole world. We got MTV. And, and where were you growing up? Like, where were you in Nashville back then, or were you uh, where did you grow up? I, I'm about. Uh, it was about a half an hour out of Nashville. Okay. And and while that sound, you know, at the time, you know, Nashville definitely wasn't quite where it is now. It was a city, but it, man, it wasn't really a big city. So that meant a town outside of Nashville, 30 minutes. Really, it was basically a small town. I could have been an hour and a half out of town and it would have been, you know, the same. So, you know, we were still, even though I could go 30 minutes to Nashville to see a movie or a concert, it was still pretty isolated. So Smyrna, Tennessee, that's, that's where I grew up. Smyrna. Wasn't that what, if, if I may say, wasn't that where Vinnie Vincent was living? Yes. 
And uh, that was like, you know, he, he lived on this off the street called Almaville Road. And, Amityville? Um, Amityville Road? Yeah, no, no, Al Almaville Road. Oh, I thought you said Amityville. I said, oh. Where, where, where he was living, where he was living was five miles from my, where I grew up, my house. Wow, wow. Now, did I you know, that's know why that? when, I, when, I, when I read that, I was just like, Smyrna? Vinnie Vincent lives in fucking Smyrna? What the fuck is he doing there? <laughs> That's so fucking. Uh, uh, sorry, so and, funny, and, and the trip and, and the trip of that is like the 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 sur full circle thing is is a uh, the first time I saw Kiss was on the Creatures tour. Wow, wow. You know, it was makeup. Yep. First time I saw him was Lick It Up tour. So Vinny was playing. I keep losing you guys. The Creatures is amazing. Now, when you saw him on the Creatures Tour, I know people who went to the Creatures Tour thinking Ace was going to be there. Hold on. They got there, guys, suddenly yeah. they, it was some other guy. Was that how it was for you? Uh, we're losing him. Um, I think he said, hold on for a second. Uh, so, like, no, no, please. Like, that, Ryan had, Ryan was expecting Ace, but uh, at the time, I subscribed. I think I think Jeremy's moving for a second. So let's see if he's he's off for a second. He might be back. All right. There he is. Are you guys back yet? Yes, you're back. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I had a subscription to Sixteen Magazine profile. So I'm gonna be there. I mean, I was a little bummed out about that because you know, Ace, I got. You know, I, I still wasn't, like, shocked or, or pissed because I, I knew what was happening. Right, right. Very cool, very cool. That's so funny. I can't believe Smyrna is where you're from. I, I don't know if I ever asked you that. Uh, that's great. Um, What's your first so memory of meeting this guy, John, John Astronomy? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, you there? Yeah, uh, I, I I can kind of hear you. I can't see you. There. there okay, you I think right. Mark asked about I, I, I am, I'm when did we first hang meet? Out the house. And I think that wh where did we first meet? We. Uh, I believe the first time we met was uh, uh, when Ace played with us in St. Paul at the that Correct. stadium. Correct. Correct. Gene did. Absolutely. Yeah. When when. Uh, you guys were playing a big benefit show in a stadium uh, for the Matter uh, charity. Yeah, Matter uh, in yeah, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Flood happened. Right, and uh, and Ace came out there to join you guys, the Gene Simmons Band, on stage, and that is the first time we met. And that was an amazing, uh, just an unbelievable event. I had so much fun there, and it, it was it was all for charity. Matter was a great charity. And uh, we, we spent a couple of nights together. So there was the night before, yeah. then there was the, the main big concert in the stadium. And then and the let me next just night recap that because, man, that's one of the biggest days. So, like, you know, cool. Cheap Trick was on the bill, and Robin had us come out on stage and sing on a song. And then we backed up Don Felder. And I mean, I got to play the Hotel California harmony solo with him i mean fucking a. that's insane that is amazing that's jeremy that pretty is cool. cool and then you know wow. play with gene in the stadium and play all these cool kiss songs and then ace comes out and i'm playing with you know half of the original kiss wow at a stadium man yeah yeah that was, is so cool i mean jeremy that is a dream come true for any musician you were you you played with cheap trick half a kiss and don felder of the eagles in one night yeah, one night oh. yeah how, how the guy who, who, who co-wrote hotel california he's one of the yeah. writers on that yeah and the fact that you played the harmony with him how cool is that i mean i would have no matter how good i might have been i would have probably clammed up on that harmony well i i did fuck up one spot but the, the, the thing that makes me feel better is uh, we played it again the next night at this uh, gala for Matters. Right. And Don fucked it up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, see, yeah, anybody, that shows that anybody can make a mistake in that solo. So that, that was great. Both nights were amazing, Jeremy. And that was, 
that was just so cool. And um, Jeremy, I, I have a surprise for you. Uh, I, I was going to save this till the end, but I, I think that now is the time to do it. So keep the phone steady, okay? Now, right. I'm just going to preface this without really going into detail. Uh, Jeremy was, uh, I don't know if we can say who you were jamming with in New York. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. No, I don't care. I'm... Jeremy was playing with Tiffany. Remember Tiffany? People? Yeah. People out there? Yeah. Tiffany was great. And I didn't see the show, but I got a, I got a call that said, Jeremy's hanging out at this place. So I went. And uh, one thing led to another. And it, let's just say that at the end of the event, I said, Jeremy, because of uh, the shenanigans that happened at that event, I have a surprise for you. And it's not just something I went out and got. This is something that I made personally and and there's only two of them in the world and and it's from stuff that i collected through the years and it ends up being something so and there's only two of them okay so stand by i have a mic attached to me by a wire i'm gonna go get this and i swear to god this is there's two or two me and you are gonna be the only two people that have this i hope you have you any, like, i have no idea what this is do you have any oh, idea i don't know what it is but i, uh, I already love it God. Oh wow! This is it. Oh, this is cool. This is an Ace Freely nice. platinum plaque, platinum Ace Freely solo record, done in platinum, signed by Ace, and then right here, this is um, one of those super heavy duty vinyl. And so, if you take this apart, inside here is another album that's uh, the like heavy the 128 vinyl. grams. Yeah, the like one the, heavy ones, grams, yeah. the poster, any of the little bits that come in that. But this is a very rare platinum album that was a leftover from when they were doing platinum albums. And it was signed by Ace. So there's two of them in the world. Nice. This one wow, that is and that one. And, and let me wow. tell you this. This one's even in better condition. So this is the, the cream of the crop. And well, Ace's I, signature. I let me see if I can show I you can that. See it. I can see it. Yeah. His is signed, wow, this John. one's signed even cooler than, than this one, which is a little smaller. So you've got a, a one of two signed by Ace. And Ace How are you going to get had, that to Jeremy, John? Are you I'm going to mail it to him. I got a special box with all kind of uh, uh, little things that will keep it safe. I was going to give this to you, Jeremy, on July, uh, on when we played Atlantic City together because uh, we had a gig in Atlantic City on uh, June 5th, but that gig got canceled, or not canceled, postponed until postponed. October, right. like it and Ace. So um, I'm going to have to mail it to you. But I was going to hand this to you personally on June 5th, but uh, well, uh, instead look, I'm showing it to you now and you're going to get it. <laughs> well, I hope you like I'm it. I, I'm trying not to cry right now. That is absolutely amazing, <laughs> John. I, I, I can't thank you enough. And, uh, you know, uh, it, wa it wasn't that bad. <laughs> oh, God damn, dude. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Jeremy. I'm so sorry for the shenanigans. I'm going to call it shenanigans. That happened. Basically, here's what happened. Uh, we were hanging out. Let me put this down. I have it on, like, blankets. You, you would laugh if, you, if I could turn the webcam over here. I've got a chair, and then I've got, like, these, like, animal skin blankets, and I have yeah. that setting there, so nothing damages it. But uh, I, I had the idea to do this. We, we've, we've had these two platinum like physical records for a long time and they we just didn't do anything with them and i remember w when ace and i got them and um i decided to make these two things and i said i'm gonna make one and there was only one made and then i physically ordered the parts and i made that one for jeremy so wow very cool wow well you cool. can see my small little man corner in my tiny little house here uh i'll find i like it, for it. You know, this, so this yeah, right. you can put that right there on the wall. That's a perfect spot. Yeah. This very, very, very first record I ever bought. I bought it from a kid that lived behind me when I was four years old. It's side three and four of Alive Two, and it's signed by oh, Gene cool. Ace. It's signed by Gene Ace and Peter. Nice. Wow. Dude, for me. So, oh, side perfect. three and four. It. You said side yeah. three. Yeah. Well, well, well the kid so came you... out and, and he didn't have the gatefold. He didn't have the album cover. He just had the records. He's like, hey, I'll sell you these for 50 cents a piece. And, you know, <laughs> I went in and asked my mom. And she's like, well, wow. I'll give you 50 cents. You can get one of them. And my brother came out with me. He's like, get that one. It has shouted out loud. 
and you know, like, right? Four. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take that one. And we should uh, give a special mention again to Bruce Kulik, who played on side. No, I'm sorry, no, Bob no, no. Kulik, who played on yeah. side four, who uh, sadly passed away either today or yesterday or something. So uh, sad news in the Kiss world for sure. I, I did at least get the chance to tell him what a big solo, larger than life was for me because like out of all of it that was my favorite song out of side three and four i loved it and you know that that solo has licks that i use in my own personal repertoire when nice. i nice right for, right for it's a freestyle. classic solo it really is a classic solo and and yeah it, uh, it, and, it, it and rocket ride were my favorite two songs off of that that record three and four Nice. And of course, yeah, and Bob, so cool. I, get, I get to play Rocket Ride all the time, you know. Yeah. Bob now, played on uh, Paul Stanley's uh, solo record and uh, wrote a, I think, co wrote a song on Mask and, of course, the four songs on Killers. So Bob was definitely a part of the, the Kiss legacy for sure and will be very missed. Sadly missed, sorely missed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, Jer Jeremy, speaking of you playing Ace Licks, um, in, like, for example, on Rocket Ride. There's something that I noticed uh, when I was out with you guys, and I probably first noticed this during sound checks. And what I'm referring to is that my band Like It uh, was was opening for Ace and Jeremy and the gang, and um, there there was a song where you're doing a delay thing that was on the Spaceman record, and so you're doing a lot of cool things that aren't you're not just playing rhythm guitar with ace you're doing some lead parts and some other cool little effects tell us about that well look man i, I told you like ryan and phil and i are fucking kiss fans and mm -hmm. my approach playing with gene or ace it doesn't matter i am we're the guys in the crowd we just are lucky enough to be up on stage so i know what i would want to see or hear and you know all of those little nuances are super important so if if there's a little harmony that happens in in the song you know that that's actually that's actually one very beneficial thing to having three guitar players is those little yep. nuances can be added and you don't have to lose the rhythm guitar right you know right and uh for, for instance uh the the very very end of detroit rock city na 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 Right. I added that harmony at the end and you know Ace picked up on that and it's funny he came up and he's like hey you know add that harmony again tomorrow night and I'm like dude I've been doing that for like the last <laughs> five months you know, I, I, of course I'm going to keep doing it and so yeah man you know like it, it's the little nuances that make it important and you know like even the non-musicians in the crowd, they may not know what it is, but they know it when their ears hear it. And that's right, what right. makes they it hear sound it. more like Kiss. And that's what they want, man. They want to they wanna hear it the way they know it. They don't want to hear my personal take on it or, or whatever. They, they want to they wanna hear what they know. And I right. respect that. And I, yeah. I respect the music. And, you know, that's just the way we're all going to do it. Yeah, and I think that's awesome because I can say as a rock fan, um, I recently, it was a couple of years ago, actually, I went and I saw a band, that, uh, the artist that I love, Hall and & Oates, and they came out and they like played these like alternate sounding versions of all the songs that I love. And it was like they were jamming them out. And I felt like yeah. they were trying to make them more hard and, and like loud rock. And I was like, this isn't, I want to hear the Hall and Oates that I grew up with on yeah, the radio. You want to hear the, you the know? real version. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and it, was, it, was, it was like, I respect what they're doing and they were showing off their chops and taking the songs to new places. But that's not what I wanted. I wanted to hear the songs that I that is in my that that is part of my DNA from hearing them so many times. So I, we appreciate that, Jeremy. Yeah, and I I, I respect that. Uh, and like like I said, man, I, I'm a guy in the audience. I'm not just like a guy that got this gig and oh cool, Ace Frehley, that's cool. It's like no, this this is real important to us. And you know I I saw Ace solo one time. You know because he didn't really come through Nashville that much. And we saw him when he came through in 2009. And that's when Derek Hawkins was in the band. Hey, Derek. Yeah. I love Derek. Hey, Derek Hawkins. I love Derek. I love Derek Hawkins. He's great. 
and that that was a good band you know like but you know it's just super important to me to play it the way the kiss fans know it because that's the way right. i want to hear it right no, jeremy well, yeah. you you guys literally can even if it you don't know it now within like a half a day can learn any song that anybody says to learn <laughs> well you know after doing the rock and roll residency for five years and you know our sets were 22 to 28 songs every week you know i i got good at learning songs and you know i wasn't always yeah. that good at learning songs that fast it was definitely like a muscle that got developed and you know sometimes that material got yeah. complex you know like like fucking uh hocus pocus by focus you know like i learned right, right, that yeah. in a day or like you know, a couple hours along with 22 other songs so you know that's just it's my job yeah like for example um and i love seeing your son again he, he should come on too he can stay on um like here's the thing i don't know if you you guys have ever played this song holy diver which I'm sure you have, but like I had to I learn played it. Holy well, well, Big Rock Show did Holy Diver, so I, I've done Holy Diver a lot. In fact, yeah. we did Holy Diver with Doug Aldrich at the residency one night. Oh wow, very cool, very cool. And when I here's the thing that that listeners might not know, like when I tried to learn that from the studio record, there's a way that you can play it where you do everything the same every time, but if you try to duplicate the way they did it on the record there's a lot of little mini changes that happen that you got to remember. And for you to have to, and, and even with these ACE nuances, for you to pick up on all those and learn them and then repeat them every night, that's hard to do. I, I guess for some people it is, uh, you know, there, there was a time in my life where that might've been hard for me. And I don't know, like I said, it's like a muscle and you do yeah. it for so long. And, you know, we were doing that show every Tuesday for five years. It just, I don't know, it gets easier. Right, right. It's its so cool. And it, I, I would love to see that, guys. I haven't seen you guys do that yet. I've only seen you with Ace. But uh, one of these days, I'm going to make it down there to Nashville. And well, are you it, still it, it, doing it's a little it? tough now. Because, no, man, uh, you know, we wrapped up the weekly thing. Uh, I remember when you wrapped it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd just do a show like maybe every three months or so. And it just got harder and harder and harder. And then it was going to get even harder because Phil plays in Accept now. So between right. the ACE schedule and Accept, I mean, it was going to be damn near impossible. And, you know, now nobody's doing anything and we still can't do it. I know. Right. Jer right. Jeremy, um, yeah, so do you have any info uh, that maybe the average person doesn't have on when touring is going to start back up or any of that kind of stuff? Nope. I have no, no idea. And, well, and not not just when touring is going to start back up because, you know, that just takes like, you know, like government clearance. And when, you know, everybody says that can happen. The question that doesn't have an answer is when are the people going to feel comfortable with going, going to gigs inside of right. rooms of thousands to ten thousands of people and standing shoulder to shoulder and and sweating and, and like, you know, enjoying rock shows like. Who knows when that's going to happen? I mean, the, yeah. the government, yeah. the government can say, "Okay, it's over. Business as usual. Move about the cabin freely." And you know, does that that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to like? I don't know if I want to go into a room with twenty thousand people, shoulder to shoulder, right. and shit. So, no, I have no idea. You know, yeah. it's gonna it's it's probably going to take a little longer than people think for people to be comfortable with that again yeah you know, i mean i think I, 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 I miss it as much as everybody else i mean you know shit this is my fucking job and you know and 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 i love seeing all the fans out on the road and you know i love playing with my friends and you know there, there's more that i miss other than just like having a job and making money so you know i i, I want it too yeah, and, it, and and you will get it, and we will get it, and and it's it could just take a little bit of time. I mean, I think there's so many different factors, vaccine and and uh, second wave, and and you know, I I think we can 
truly, this is my personal opinion, look ahead to 2021 and, and know yeah. that that's going to be a very strong year for rock. I, I hope, uh, I would love to see things come back in the fall, but with each uh, week that goes by, that seems less likely. But we do know bands like Enough's Enough is planning a tour in, in September. So so yeah, so we'll, well see. Um, we'll see. But well, I think... You know, like e- even some of our stuff has been rescheduled for like September and October and you know, could happen. Great. We even, it could. J- Jeremy, it could. But man, th- there's no guarantee that that's not going to be rescheduled again. And I, and right. I, I am aware of that. And 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 I'm not 100% mentally committed that all of that stuff's even happening. You know, I, yeah, I'm hoping I know. for and, the and best. You know what, Jeremy? I just have to say because I, I, you know, I, um, if for for uh, full disclosure, all of you guys who are watching this. I work with the agent and um, and the team ace and booking these gigs. And um, we have uh, some shows in uh, August scheduled, Ace Freely, uh, and, uh, and then um, September, October. And we're booking them, but, and we're, we're confirming, but we don't know yet. So the, the idea is you just schedule them, and then maybe they'll get rescheduled. But who knows? And no one knows. We don't know. That's why right. everybody was kind of upset with Motley Crue and those guys about what are they going to do with the tour. But they didn't even know. No one knows. Right. Right on. So, oh, there he is again. Uh, hey, J- J- Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy. I have a family question to ask you, too. We got, we got kids here. Oh, my oh, wife hey. is here. Emily's here. Yeah. Right. Jeremy, but, do you know, uh, Mark, have you ever met Jeremy before this? Uh, I've seen him play live numerous times, but I'm not sure that okay. I've ever met him. Jeremy, uh, meet Mark's wife, Emily. Uh, I think we met. I think uh, we meet. Yeah. Oh, oh, actually, we did. We may have met at the One Kiss um, convention in uh, yeah. Parsippany or whatever that yeah. was, where you guys like played. Kiesley. You yeah. played the '78 right, right. solo record in its entirety. Yes, that night. yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So good, man. Oh, hey, Emily, guys, I like that only, you have you uh, Martini. How sick too. I was during that performance. You, oh, were you? You, you would. Uh, I, okay, so I have type one diabetes. Oh. Hmm. I thought I had food poisoning. I think. I had diabetic ketoacidosis. Oh no! I was throwing up every 15 minutes. Uh, my blood sugar was in the 400s. Oh my god! Uh, when, when I when I look at that footage and I see what I pulled off, I impress myself. Even I I, I can't uh, believe I was able to pull it together enough to even do that. I, I, I knew. Heard. Yeah. Had you changed your meds or something? I mean, are you on like a long, are you on a pump or like what do you do for type one? Uh, no, uh, I wear this thing on my arm that yeah, uh, okay. my blood sugar. There you go. Uh, so I, I I didn't have this back then, and uh, and I can't remember if I'd forgotten my meter or if I just wrote out of test test strips. Yeah, but I, I think I was taking weak insulin. Because about two and a half weeks later, I wound up in the hospital for a couple of days oh, with God. diabetic ketoacidosis. But I mean, you know, John, you, you can ask Philly. Philly was in the bathroom with some other guy. Who oh came, man, slipped my mind. And I mean, these dudes are watching me in my most vulnerable state. I'm like laying at the toilet and throwing up like literally every two minutes. Oh um, man, you faked and, your way through that show beautifully. Yeah, because that was, was a such great a good show. show. Uh, Jeremy, so, uh, you're 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 a pro, have, have and a you can do it. And he, and he prescribed some uh, anti-nausea medicine for cancer patients, and I took one of those, and and like two hours later, you know, I, I definitely felt weird, but you know, I, I knew that, that that was a big show for Ace, and I did not want to fuck that up. So, I don't know, man. I just mentally put myself where i needed to be and yeah right was, on jeremy that's that how that good you are day. and and jeremy i wanted to also mention jeremy that you are not just the only rocker or musician in your family your wife much like mark's mm. wife is also a musician she just came out with something tell us about that <laughs> uh she has a new album coming out called muscle and skin and let's give the fans the whole deal say her name and everything say everything uh, my wife's name is hannah fairlight uh, she is a songwriter. She plays piano, guitar, saxophone. I mean, she can play bass and drums. I don't know. She's like kind of a powerhouse type. Uh, she was in the movie Pitch Perfect 3, if any of you are familiar with that movie. 
and she is coming out with a new album. It's in June. I can't remember the exact date, but uh, if you look at any of her social media, I'm sure that'll tell you. She has all right two new video two new videos out already. Uh, one for a song called uh, "Do What You Said You Wanted to Do," and uh, and the other one is called uh, uh, "Oh, I'm gonna get so much trouble." <laughs> 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 Put put you on the spot. Yeah. Have you guys worked together? We'll look it up. What's that? Have you guys done a band together? Or you worked together? Uh, well, I, I play guitar in her band, but you know, I don't really. I just play what she tells me to play. Yeah. You know, she is uh, definitely headstrong in her writing and and developed enough where she doesn't really need my input. Yeah. And That's awesome. so I don't really offer it. I'll just. Right on. <laughs> I just play what she tells me to play. Right. <laughs> Shut up and play your guitar, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, Jeremy, before we let you go, wh where's the best place that people can find you online? Uh, man, you can go to, babe, right quick, your new single. They put me on the spot and I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> this Silence. Sorry, This Silence. This Silence, okay. Yeah, and, and she filmed that and edited it herself because, you know, we can't really work with other people right now. So, I mean... I don't know. She's wow, got an cool. eye for, for, for film as well as making music. So yeah, go awesome. check that out. Uh, you can find me on the Jeremy Asbrock on Instagram. Jer I've got two pages on Facebook because I ran out of room for friends on one of them. And uh, Twitter, same thing, my name. Uh, Phil and I have a very big announcement tomorrow on uh, uh, the thing that Mark Weiss is doing, uh, The Decade That Rocked. Okay. Yeah, if you look at Dave El Dave Ellison's page, Mark Weiss's page, yep. uh, Philip and I will be on between nine and ten Central Saturday night tomorrow night to make a very big announcement. I'd tell you, but got to save it for tomorrow because we've right already <laughs> committed committed to releasing this information on their show. But uh, I'm very, 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 very excited to make this big announcement. Okay, nice. well, we will be watching tomorrow night for the people listening to the podcast version of this. Obviously, this is in the past tense, but we will uh, definitely, uh, for the people on the live stream tomorrow night, on Mark yeah. Weiss's page and Dave yeah. Ellison's Dave, page. Dave right? Ellison's page, yeah. And uh, I, I think if you look up the decade that rocked, that should take you to where you need to go. Okay. Right, which cool. the decade of rock guys is Mark Weiss, the amazing photographer's new book, and I believe David Elveson is hosting the event, and yeah. uh, you guys are going to be a big part of it, and it's going to be an amazing yeah. online event tomorrow night. Do not between miss it. Phil so and I will be on between nine and ten o'clock, but man, there's going to be a lot of really cool rock and rollers on the thing because you know Mark has been photographing these people, you know. The whole time, all of us have been listening to rock and roll. Right on. Cool. All right. Any other questions, John? We all set with Jeremy for tonight? Well, or? I think Je I just want to thank Jeremy again for Absolutely. coming on tonight. And uh, I can't wait till we're back on the tour again. And too, uh, whether whether or not like it's opening up, uh, I have, you know, I, I, I'm in a dual role because I, I work with Jeremy with Ace just as like, uh, like a Ace's guy. But uh, or one of Ace's guys. But um, when I get to open up with my band, like it for Jeremy and Ace's band, uh, I have the most fun doing that. And we've done it for twenty some shows uh, around yeah, the USA and had a great yeah. time. Yeah, yeah we, I saw one toured, of them. I, we, I, we, I, we've toured together. I mean, you know, like that's yeah, and yeah, all over the U.S. And you know what's cool is like what, what um, Eddie Ojeda said is that like when you tour with somebody, it's like a whole different vibe. You, you really like, it's a family thing. You, you, you yeah, get it's like, like it's a, like going it's, to camp. Touring yeah. is camp. Right on. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. All right. Rock well, Jeremy, camp. we and, look and, forward and to. And don't, uh, and don't forget, John, hook, hook me and Eddie up since he's in Nashville. Oh, and no like, doubt. You know, like I'm the only native he's going to meet here. He can meet all these other rock and rollers, but none of these motherfuckers are from here. I'm right. from there. You are right. Right. On. I will, and he'll be happy that he'll be happy for that because I'm sure he meets people. But they're like you said, they're all transplants. Yeah. You're originally from Nashville, so you can show him. You 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 got the real deal, and I promise I will do that. So Jeremy, thank awesome. you again for everything Thanks, tonight. 
I will be in touch soon and you're going to get a big box in your, your I'm going to be in touch with you about that. You're going to get a big box Thanks, soon. It's going to have that. I really plaque. appreciate that. That's, that's very sweet of you to do. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Thank you. You don't have to, you don't have to thank me. I just, I just <laughs> wanted to show it on this because I wanted to surprise you. And I, as an ace fan, now I'm getting tear. Now I'm tearing up. I swear to God, I <laughs> these last time you can't say, Jer I swear to God, little weird things like this can make me tear up. Um, to me, this was just a, a cool thing. Uh, as as somebody who's been an ace fan forever, having that on my wall is is like the ultimate thing. And um, especially when you hear the the story of how it came about, and and I said, if I'm going to do one of these. We only have two of these, and we've had them for years. I'm going to do one for me, and I'm doing one for Jeremy. Right on. <laughs> awesome, man. It, 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 and honestly, like, that's the perfect platinum record to have on my wall because Ace is my guy. He's why I'm here. He's why I play guitar. You know, he's, he's my dude. Awesome, Jeremy. So thank cool. you. Thank you, again. Jeremy. Thanks, and guys. congratulations to your son. We're going to um, <laughs> post links to your wife's record. And uh, we're Hannah's album, and uh, it's going to be all cool. Say bye. bye. All right. Bye. Congratulations bye. on your preschool bye. graduation. Bye. Time for oh. your bed. Betty buys. Yeah, put your jammies on. It's time. Yep. Time to put your jammies on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It looks like the theme. He's rocking. He's, he's, a, he's a rock star already. He's like Paul Stanley. He's going rock and roll right there. All right. Right on. All right, guys. All right, Thank Jeremy. you so much, Thank Jeremy. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye all right good night okay. cool good night. Good night. all right so john yo i have to stand up and stretch my legs um okay and, go ahead uh, i can talk to emily emily's gonna take over for a second okay. I, might, I might grab a beer too so <laughs> i go. need something <laughs> by the way i'm drinking dash vodka uh from my great cousins hank and rennie reeves of the great state of texas this is going to be the big new thing around the country <laughs> around the world dash i know right? the dash vodka i wish i had some where can well, we get you, it you, we, we have some oh hold on once my uh is someone texting you earpiece oh, your, fell your, your, out so, your, your piece fell out. you were these so are, excited are, to see me the your piece your ears I was, exploded I was, now check this out these are you know it uh, i instead of the white ones i gotta get heavy metal looking ones and then mm -hmm. but you, mm -hmm. you gotta do everything backwards with these mirrors and stuff so this is a black one that popped out i can't do it with both in because then i can't hear myself talking that's weird by the so, way i need to work with mark on this lighting this is Awful. No, it no. It looks, no, it's, it looks bad. good. It looks it's good. It's terrible. Well, if you want, I don't know what this is. If you want, it's literally a spotlight in my face. It's the worst thing I've ever seen in my yeah, life. Well, that's what it's it really hard for you to look at it. Um, I have two no, lights. This is not um, what I look like. Look, see how bright my hands are. I have two lights there, but they are on a percentage, so I can change <laughs> the percentage. Terrible, like Mark. Dimmer. It's, it's terrible. Good. Do you want your seat back? Sure. Emily, I love that you have that uh, martini. So, this is a, a dirty, dirty, dirty martini. Okay, we had a discussion on a previous show on how to make them. Now, was I correct? I don't know if you saw what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you were correct, John. So, so, John, we got about 10 minutes left. Do you want to okay. um, do the... the uh, Oh yeah, what we've guitar. been doing with the guitars and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I just love your guitar stories. Thank you. you want me to pick let's, one or? Let's yeah, pick one. We'll do the guitar, brush your greatness, and then we'll read some comments because we definitely got to read the comments. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'll keep somebody. My guitar story to a minimum. Uh, let's see what. Yeah. Okay, oh, what you guitar? are you know a great this? man, John O. Very kind of you, says David Quinn. All right. Um, so so let I'm going to move these just so you can see the guitars. Yeah, let me pick one. I'm trying to re remember which ones I picked and which ones I haven't. Okay, so let's let's go with. Um, I love the dog. Yeah, this it's like ridiculous trying to do a show here. It's like I, I ride the mute button constantly because it's dogs barking, kids yelling. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry, anyway, I love that it's like makes it you yeah know, real. Um, I'm trying to remember which ones we did the black one. Uh, how about like the third, it's like the th on my left, which I guess would be your right, the third one in. It's like, uh, it looks like, is that tobacco? What, what do you call that? Uh, the, yeah. Th tobacco is the first one. 
Is that the one you mean? Yeah. Or okay. Yeah. One? Yeah. Uh, let's. Tobacco is the first one. Yeah. Let's do that one. Yeah. Let's do that okay, one. Okay. Okay. Stand yeah. by. Now, uh, I I bought an extension on this microphone cord so that I could get the guitars without uh, turning out the microphone. Okay. So. See, right now I just bumped it into the wall. Did I mind? No. I'm. I'm. It's like therapy. In, in the past, I would have freaked out. Ask Jamie Ross. He, Jamie Ross of Like It fame, one of the greatest singers and uh, rockers of all time, he, always makes fun of me because when we used to bump guitars, I used to freak out. But now I'm getting a little cooler about that, and uh, it doesn't bother me. So anyway, guys, this is a Gibson Les Paul antique. Uh, Les Paul classic antique. Okay, oh. now... One might ask, what does that mean? So a little history. A Les Paul Classic is basically a Les Paul Standard. What, does, what is a Les Paul Standard? A Les Paul Standard is your classic Les Paul. And the word standard is not necessarily mean lower than something else. Standard is honestly one of the higher end Les Pauls. And like, like Jimmy Page plays a Les Paul Standard. Right. Now, Les Paul Classic is a version of a Les Paul standard. Okay. Now, See, I didn't know that. I didn't know that the classic is a version of the standard. Wow. Okay. Yeah. A classic is just a version of the standard. And for some reason, I think what happened was it, it, it kind of went both ways. I think back when classics came out, they were a little bit of like a souped up standard. And then standards became the more elite guitars and classics went from being, I think, more elite to less elite. It's, it's a strange thing. Uh, you have to look at the pricing through the years. But anyway, this is a Les Paul Classic, which is based on a standard, which is what Jimmy Page played. And this is a Les Paul Classic Antique, which was a rare guitar that they only made a small amount of in the year that I got this. And I, it was, uh, I forgot the year. I can look at the serial number. Who's it signed by? Okay, so here's the, the story about this. This guitar is signed by Ace. And he wrote to John 2000, and he crossed out what was 1960. The original classics were 1960 reissues, some of them, okay. and, or maybe all of them. And even Paul Stanley, I think, was playing classics on the Hot in the Shade tour, or maybe Custom Shop classics. And so Ace crossed out 1960 and wrote 2000, so that's why there's an oh, wow. X there. Now, what's cool about this is this pickguard I stole from a different guitar uh, <laughs> that I uh, had, and I decided it was going to be perfect for this guitar. What's cool about this is this. I'm going to say it quickly. This guitar has headstock binding and a crown inlay. That is rare. Now, binding is this white line that goes. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, normal Gibson, Les Paul standards, or classics do not have this white line now what was weird is one of ace's old Les Paul deluxes or tobacco sunburst which is his based off of um guitar had a little line about around there i don't know what it was um i don't know if he drew that on or painted it on or whatever but he it was almost like he put his own binding on the guitar now here's what's cool about this guitar and i'm going to sum it up in a couple of ways one the pickups i got directly from larry demarzio who is the only person, DiMarzio Pickups, that can make a double cream. When I say double cream, I mean one, two together, double cream. This color is called cream. This has got a flame top, two-piece top, and get this, guys. See that album there, Ace Frehley Origins? This guitar, without the pickguard, is this guitar on the cover of the album, and I took all those pictures, and just so you know, this guitar is that guitar, that guitar is this guitar, this guitar is that guitar, <laughs> and this guitar is that guitar. The actual Still, guitars. The actual guitars, yes. Yeah, right. So on Ace's But now you're not record, saying it's the same model. It's like no, that is the guitar on the Ace album. Wait, John, yeah. which, which guitar is what guitar? That guitar is this yeah, guitar, the, the, this the, guitar the, is that guitar, <laughs> and this guitar is that guitar. It sounds like a Dr. Yeah. Seuss book. I yeah. like it. Yeah, it's, it's good. And how cool is that? But these aren't only like the Ace model. They're the real ones. Like, so 
Um, and I special thanks to Larry DiMarzio. He sent me pickups for multiple guitars. And the best story I have, which I'm going to make it fast, is one time we needed a, a fake pickup picture for uh, Ace of Smoking Guitar in Bozeman, Montana. And who drove me to Staples to print these out? Larry DiMarzio. So this is what I used to do on tour. I used to say, oh, we need a pickup made, like a fake picture of a pickup, and I want it to look great. So I get the guy who made the pickups, coincidentally was the person who had a car who was hanging with me at the hotel, and he drove me to make the fake pickup. I think that might be one of the great, craziest stories ever. Now, Mark, I, before we get to the comments, I got to yeah. ask you, you have so many insane stories, okay? Yeah. Now, well, we've been doing the not, brush with greatness. We've brush, done a number of them already, segment. yeah. This is called The Brush with Greatness, and we've done it before. Now, you have no idea who I'm going to throw out here, okay? Right. And I'm going to okay. throw out, I'm going to make can, You don't have, I know you know a lot of my stories, too, so you, yeah. you, can, you can throw out any name, like and I will try name. to connect the story to it. Okay, sure I'll throw out oh, three he, names. He, yeah, he could do it. Either he can do it or I can do it with it. Okay, name. there you go. Emily or, or okay, Mark. Okay, Emily's on, too, Okay. Oh, Emily, I have a, another <laughs> funny story, which I'm saying. I, we, we can talk all night. I know last week we went a little extra, but uh, I saw an opossum over the, yesterday. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that Facebook. on your Facebook page. Yeah. How crazy is that? There, uh, back yeah. in my hometown. You don't want him to bite you. Yeah, I know. It might crazy. bite me. Yeah. There was a, there was a in, in my hometown, there, uh, Winver, PA, which I love. There was uh, something, uh, the Johnstown Tribune Democrat paper had like listings for bands uh, on, on the weekend. It was called The Weekender. I think it still exists. And what was great is there was a listing for a band that said Roadkill. Right. They're... Which is a great name for my home area. You know, a lot of animals. We don't, we don't advocate the running over of animals, however. <laughs> it just happens. At least not for fun. It happens. <laughs> it by just... accident. But the greatest part about the band Roadkill is they felt that it was necessary to underneath the name Roadkill to put formerly possum. And right. they, they, they dropped the yeah, that, that is pretty funny. Just in case any of those possum fans were out there right. ready to go to the Alpine Inn. <laughs> right. they, they might not know if they saw it was Roadkill, but when they knew it was awesome. yeah. formerly possum. Right. That's right. I'm going. Fuck. I'm going. Sorry. I'm going. I, I, yeah. I was thinking of going to the gig. You know, roadkill, I'm not sure. But, oh, God, it's formerly possum. I'm going. I'm there. Yeah, anyway, that's pretty guys, funny. Guys, I'm just trying to <laughs> I'm just trying to make this an exciting show. You know, we, some miss you. Like, we, miss talk, we miss you. We miss you. We miss talking you. about possums and roadkill. So kill. crazy. He's, it, the truth is, guys, I can be straight. I, I am trying to do a fun show for the Talking Mental listeners. And I like roadkill, formerly and possum. Viewers. Was Possum Dixon a famous band, or is that another band? From my hometown, like the uh, it doesn't ring a bell with me. It doesn't ring a bell. Dixon. Okay, right. it must have been from my hometown. So I like possums. Um, I like this one. I hope I didn't scare it away from its own habitat, which could be a possibility. Did <laughs> anyway. you chase it? No, I just like walked after it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it could be officially called chasing it. I just it. You it kind went of pet from, it. I did not pet it because I. I See, I saw that uh, commercial where the, the father said, you know, instead of getting a dog, you know, times are tough. So maybe we'll just get you a possum. And then it went with <laughs> right. Yeah, possum. So, yeah. so guess what, guys? That was an Aussie face. Yeah, okay, you see that? Okay. Right, yeah. That, that was, see, you, you keep your teeth a little. See, a Simmons face is, that's a Simmons face, an Aussie face is. And I'm starting to show my teeth more because in these. Oh, so Victor uh, Ruiz these, says in the comments, Possum Dixon was a famous band from Arizona. Oh, so wow. he yeah. knows Possum Dixon. Good. All right. So what else? So, we it's it's ten oh one. Do you want to you want to go a little longer? We were we were saying. I think 10, we should go because I think we should go another fifteen to thirty minutes. Fifteen okay. to thirty 15 hours. Fifteen works. I can't do I yeah. can't do thirty. But fifteen I'm down to thirty hours. Me. Okay. So I want to do brush with greatness. So right. Mark, I'm going to throw three names out. And you don't know what I'm going to say. Randy Blythe, rock star. Okay. Um, yeah, I have Michael a story Stipe, with him. Michael Stipe. Uh, I have a story with him. Yeah. Not a, uh, I consider him a rock star, but more of like an alternative star. And then I'm going to go with someone really 
off the beaten path. And and I didn't even think of who this is going to be yet. Um, how about you tell me those two, and then I'm going to come up with the, the third oh, yeah. one. He has a story for both of those people. Do you, you know the like Randy good, one? I was with you for the Randy one, wasn't I? Uh, I, yeah, what is it? I'm just wondering if you're thinking the same story. Were we in, when we were in LA? Was it LA one? No. Or California? No, no, no. No, I, I, I've only, I, I don't know what story, story that one was. Oh, you have multiple that, stories for Randy was, White. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I never met him okay, in LA. Go ahead, go so ahead. So I'm go not ahead. sure what that is. Okay. But um, the only Randy one I have, besides having interviewed him with, I believe, you on, on Talking Metal, he was on Talking Metal at one point, right. was we were at OzFest, and I had a West Memphis Three shirt on, who were these three guys who were in jail, and there's documentaries about them, and Metallica did the music for the documentaries and all this stuff, but or provided music. But anyways, he came up to me, he saw me with the shirt on and-, and What year? Because they're free now. They are free now. Yeah, oh, this is, yeah. this is 2000. Six or well, so seven. I was with you at that office. Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was at PNC. Yeah. Um, and he came up to me and said, "Hey, man, I, I really appreciate that you have that shirt on. It's a great shirt." Yeah. And, and that's my. That's. My He's a big social <laughs> justice. Yeah. That's like, that's a, so that's the yeah. yeah. Uh, the Michael Stipe story. Uh, this I've, is a good I've one. said before. Um, I don't know if I've ever said it in public, but uh, I was with uh, Bill Flanagan, who is a top uh, music journalist. He's currently uh, on Sirius XM, friend of mine. I still talk to him every now and again. Uh, I love Bill Flanagan. Like He's Bono's, one of Bono's good close friends. Right. Anyways, he, um, he was interviewing Michael Stipe, and I was the associate producer on the, on the, sh on the interview. And I believe it was on on top of the Waldorf. Uh, wow. There was Waldorf yeah, there's some like hotel. outdoor yeah, a hotel in New York yeah, City hotel, yeah. on on Fifth Ave, right? Uh, and and so so we were there, and there was like some kind of outside balcony where we did the interview. It was like a restaurant, but it was closed down. I don't know, but anyways, Michael Stipe uh, did the interview, and then afterward. Uh, they they were like Mark. Well, why don't you walk Michael over to the freight elevator? And so it was me, Michael Stipe, and his assistant, and we got on the freight elevator so he didn't have to take the regular elevator down. And he had recently had a had some surgery. I think he had a hernia or something. So he he didn't want to take the the flight of stairs down to get on the normal elevator. That's what it was. So we get on the freight elevator, which was the only one that went that high up in the hotel. And so it's me, him and his assistant, we're going down. I'm just basically taking him down to his car, you know? And he's like, uh, so what, what goes on now? And I was like, I was like, I, I don't know. I said, going back to the office. And he said, uh, well, <laughs> I'm heading back to my hotel room. I'm going to, you know, and this is back in the nineties when, you know, blunts and, and forties were cool. And that, and this is what he says to me. He's like, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a 40, he goes, oh, I got a couple cold ones, a couple 40 ounces back in my room, and I'm going to smoke a nice blunt. Uh, he's like, you're welcome to come with me if you want to hang out. <laughs> and I, I, said, uh, I, said, I said, well, I really appreciate that, man. I wish I could. I said, but I actually have to take the tapes of the interview we just shot back to, to VH1 and transcribe. He's like, oh, that's cool, man. I just thought I'd throw it out there. And I was like, so, yeah. And then <laughs> like I got him down to his car. And his assistant, who was female, she was silent the whole time in the elevator. Wow. Uh, and, and there may have been, she may have said some other stuff. I can't remember. Like, what are you listening to? Blah, blah, blah. So, and then, then that was that. So, but I, who else do you know in the world who wouldn't have ditched work? I would have ditched work. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. I, no matter what, like, I would have been like, yeah, okay. <laughs> see you later. Just like I'm two hours late back to work. But this now, is I didn't know, and and there's no there's no disrespect towards Michael Stipe, but I didn't know if he was. It's been said that maybe yeah. he's gay or bisexual, so I didn't know if he was like kind of like he hitting on hitting Mark? on me, or he just thought I was like some cool guy he wanted he wanted to hang out with. Probably I, I a little of both. I, I don't know. Probably a little of both. <laughs> um, but but I had the opportunity to hang out in Michael <laughs> yeah, Stipe's like hotel room, room apparently Stipe, just with him and beers and and weed and <laughs> and 
I, I, I didn't do it. Taking drugs. Say no to drugs. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm yeah, joking. the bottom That's line is he wouldn't have invited me. I don't but know. I, I remember specifically he referred, <laughs> we referred to it as a blunt and 40s. Blunt. Yeah, which and is just so 90s. Like 40. Oh, we. Oh, we. Old English. English. Yeah. Old yeah, English. We used to drink those in, in college. When, when we were first hanging out in New York City, we used to get those 40s. Remember that? Yeah, I do remember what, that. What 40s did you get? Because we got Old English in college. Yeah, Old English was one, and we got another one that I, Mark, do you remember the name that me and Rob Fiorentino used to like? There was one. Um, I'm wow. trying to, I, I don't know. I, we got to, we're, we're going to research that for next time. What, now, were the one ones that, what were the ones that Snoop and Dre, Dre drank? Uh, the, the, it was like the. Uh, the OE? Didn't they do Cold Old English? That Cold, was 45. Cold 45. Cold 45. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah Cold, Cold 45. 45. There so was we... one that we really liked, and I know that when the Del when we heard they were going out of business, uh, I think Mark, uh, Rob and I went out and bought every one we could find in any deli. That's a New right. York term. Um, I got I Gene Simmons. We're talking about Ace and Gene. I know you got a lot of Ace stories. How about a Gene Simmons story? Uh, yeah, I got a number of Gene Simmons stories. Um, Tell like, us like, I, I could go old, on and on. Not, like a, not a new Gene Simmons story, like an old VH1. Uh, you you taking story. me to his birthday party and sitting with Gene at his birthday party. Do you remember? I don't know right. if you remember that. There's that. I but did, I'll tell the one where Sonic, the VH, right? speaking of VH1, we interviewed Paul and Gene for VH1. I've said this on Facebook before, but after the interview, it was a, a similar thing where where the interview ended and I got a picture with Paul. He left. This is 90, 95, actually, right before the unplugged. And um, then Gene afterwards, he was the same thing. He's like, what are you doing now? And I was like, <laughs> I was like and this is Gene Simmons in, in a hotel. Maybe even been this. It wasn't the and same. You were already at the hotel. Just yeah, yeah. The, the interview. interview was done. And he had done an interview, he and Paul, for the 70s documentary that, that VH1 was doing. And he was like, well, hang out. Have a seat on my couch. And so uh, me and Robert Katz, who was an executive producer at VH1, sat down. And, and I had, like, long, kind of blondish, you know, grungy you like, hair. You look like Kurt Cobain. And, like, you yeah, really, like you look, Kurt Cobain. Like, yeah. You're going to hair was, again, Mark, except it's just a little darker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then he started asking me questions. He was like, so, what do you think of Rage? Oh, well, Tom Morello, he just called me yesterday. And, he, and then he'd be like, <laughs> he's like, what about this guy Maynard from Tool? Are you, are, do you like him? Do you like him? What, what about him? And then, and then he was like, and then, then he was like, He's like, you know what I got? And I was like, what? He's like, I happen to have a recording of Kurt Cobain doing Going Blind. And I was like, I was like, oh, well, the Melvins have a version of that. And I said, and Kurt produced that record. But it was, it was, uh, he didn't actually produce that song, but he produced the rest of the record. He was like, he was like, yeah, it's Kurt Cobain singing with the Melvins and they're doing going blind and i i think he, he may was have been mistaken. He was i think mistaken. he may have been mistaken because if that were true that's never surfaced and i've never i've googled it i've read it tried to read it online but maybe according to gene simmons there is a recording out there of kurt doing going blind as opposed to buzz, buzz like an alternate version which yeah, could exist which kurt produced yeah maybe kurt yeah. did like a well, well, on kurt didn't produce that oh, he song did. he produced the rest yeah. of the record but if you look at the record that song, that song is that's not the one yeah. maybe yeah. kurt in a different session or something did it pass on that maybe it's a completely different version so or maybe can gene was just confused can which is also a possibility but amazing. but then the bottom line is he was trying to uh, milk you for information i love gene simmons right no the key is like, gene simmons our favorite guy in the whole world gene simmons i mean you cannot get cooler than gene effing simmons um, and he was trying to say, I spotted a hip dude. Yeah. Right. Looks like Kurt Cobain, who's working for VH1, which is like the hot thing at the moment and, yeah. uh, still is. And, uh, was saying, I want to hang out with this guy to find out what he likes because he's like the, the, the cool factor at this point. So yeah. how cool is that? That Gene Simmons thought you were cool. Yeah, like, and I, I also remember during the conversation with him, I said to him, I said to him, uh, 
So, you know, there's been some rumors that Ace and Peter might show up at the Unplugged. And he was like, you never know. Like he said that. Wow. And it was oh, like okay. a couple of days before. What? And I also remember I had to go to the bathroom really bad the whole time I was sitting on the couch talking yeah. to him. But I didn't want to be like, excuse me while I use the bathroom. I, so I just <laughs> held it in and sat on the couch. Like, but, I got to pee. But um, that somebody is said on, uh, on the, the comments, yeah, they said, do I have any... Uh, Todd Rundgren stories, which I don't. Um, how about you guys? Uh, any stories? Any brush well, with greatness? You know Todd Rundgren? I don't have any Todd stories, but I know um, I've had some B.B. Buell encounters. And uh, B.B. Right. Buell uh, was, <laughs> is um, Liv Tyler's mother, and Todd Rundgren is her father, correct? No, no, with Steve, uh, Steven Tyler is. Wait. Oh, yeah, Liv, yeah, yeah. Liv, yeah, Liv, no. Liv that, Tyler. That's what I meant. Liv, here, here, Liv Tyler is um, BB and, BB and Steven. Steven's daughter, yeah. but she was raised by, by Todd uh, Ron. Correct. That, that's what I mean. Yeah. Liv Tyler, of course, is Steven Tyler's daughter. Let me correct that. Liv Tyler is Steven Tyler's daughter with BB Buell. However, um, for a little part of her life, she was living with Todd Rundgren, too. The last time we ran into BB Buell was at Guns N' Roses. That what show? That tiny little show we went to. Where did we see them in New York City? The Hammerstein. Was it Hammerstein? Because we I were don't in the know. balcony. Do you remember? And she was right. She was kind of with us, and she turned around and like was like, "Hey." Oh yeah, because we had I think just interviewed her on Talking Metal shortly before. Anyway, she was at a GNR show. I think yeah. she's good friends with Frank. I think she's good. Could friends be. With Frank. She probably is good friends with Frank. Hey guys, I want to I want to mention a couple of people that I really know. Yeah, let's so, read some uh, comments, and then we'll get out of here. Yeah. Rich St. Van is a great dude. He uh, lives in Weehawken. He's friends with Philly from the Ace Crew and everybody. And Rich helps out with uh, tons of stuff, but Ace stuff, like it stuff. Um, and um, yeah. If you have any questions, now is your time. Throw a comment at us because we're wrapping up time. here. David Quinn. David Quinn is a, a good buddy uh, as well. And Rich St. Van, by the way, if whenever you're. Um, cool with hanging out people you know covid style uh let me know we'll hang out um david quinn two six point two alcohol extra strong full body pilsner yep you are correct uh we definitely got to get into that now let's see who else see i can only see like four comments on my screen and it yeah, says it, we have 91 comments, and I'm going to read some names down just so I can read the names. Yeah, I can scroll Richard back Hand, quite a bit. Victor but. Ruiz, who we, we love Victor, talking metal. Uh, Brian Borges, my childhood best friend and current all time. If somebody said, who's your best friend of all time? Brian Borges. Cherry and Michelle, I call them the marketing team. They are watching. David Arnold, who worked with us at uh, Talking Metal and one of our longtime friends. Uh, Jason L., the mask. Thank you, Jason. Well, he's going to be in a TV show with me. Michael Duno, Laura, uh, I love her. Uh, Joe Ryan, Hank Reeves, the vodka. Uh, Bert Gabriel's watching. <laughs> Michelle. Oh, Vince. Emily Striegel's yeah. watching. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people. Hey. A lot of people are watching. Hi. Cool. All right. Um, I will end on this and then. Uh, I just wanted to say that I got some inside. Delilah, this might Jack be. Waller. I got more names. I got more names. I'm sorry, guys. We've got uh, uh, Delilah, the best photographer of all time. Uh, Jack Lawler, Tina Gresco. Uh, lots of people. Lisa Colbert, uh, Colbert or Corbett. Um, one of my absolute longtime great, great friends. Uh, she was in a poison video for I Won't Forget You. Um, Look at that video. Lots of lots of cool people. And my favorite Facebook person in the whole world, his name is Jack Lawler. L-A-U-L-E-R. Give him a friend request. If you want to see cool, funny posts, Jack Lawler is the guy. And he's also Jamie Ross's best friend now, too. All right. So Jamie uh, Ross, like it. Yeah, my band. Yeah, Jamie Ross is in John's band. So um, so I did want to mention that I, I got some some stats. These are real stats. When uh, Apple launched uh, the podcast section of iTunes back in 2005, by the end of that year, there was like 1,500 podcasts <laughs> available on iTunes. 
And we were one of them, John. We were one of the first podcasts. When I say that, people don't believe me. <laughs> I can tell you this, this info is, is absolutely correct. As of early May, this, we're recording this on May 29th. So earlier this month, iTunes passed the one, it's not even iTunes anymore because they've removed the podcasts off of iTunes and now it's a podcasting app that you have to go to, Apple Podcasts. So now the Apple Podcasting app as of early May 2020 now has over 1 million, they passed the <laughs> 1 million mark for podcasts. Everyone okay. has a podcast. Is, yeah, that so, so basically... Story. And there's what 330 million people in this country. Well, so, but I know that's worldwide. But I'm just saying, there are one million podcasts now available on iTunes. And this is the weird thing: only 26 million episodes. So that goes to tell you that most of these podcasts don't last very long. Right. Um, right. Yeah. We are currently on. This is probably going to be the 872nd <laughs> episode, episode of Talking Metal. Yeah. It's a labor of love. I'm so proud yeah. of you guys. I, I'm proud. Of, I am I'm I'm proud, proud of, of how far we've gone. And so let's and, recap that fact again. So okay, go ahead. when this started, there were 1,500 podcasts in the world, and we were one of them. And yeah. this was in 2005 when we started. And then now there are over a million podcasts, and everybody and their brother has a podcast. And when we did it... And their son and their many, daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, this, and and we lasted this long. We're still doing it. Right, yeah. right. And, 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 and I will say, happen. it makes sense that there's over a million now because about twice a week for the last three years, people reach out to me and say, I'm starting a podcast. And it's just like, I, I don't know what people want me to do when they tell me that. <laughs> Jump up oh, and God, down. Oh, one more, oh, more oh, person no. that, <laughs> one more person that Graham Bonnet is going to be interviewed on their, their podcast. <laughs> You know, so so when I interview Brent, Graham Bonnet, there's now 20 other podcasts no. that interview him the same. Well, what meet. happens? Well, here's the sad thing. I think it's like I'm not excited for these other podcasts. Come on, no, no. we are. No. We welcome all. Stop it. No. There's no thumbs down <laughs> because it's not a competition. We have our fan base. You were well, according to our song, it is. It's, no, I'm joking. Yeah. What's that song? It says communication, competition, <laughs> dedication. Right. Yeah. By Rob Halford. Okay. I know. Judas Priest. So, Emily, I don't want to contradict you, but Rob Halford not... of Judas Priest wrote the Talking Metal theme song, which we played earlier, and he said, communication, competition, dedication. Yeah, but seriously, you guys don't have to compete with anyone. I know, we're just and this is Steve Stevens, by the way. Somebody's asking who's on my shirt. He's Steve a great Stevens. guitar player. Um, um, but anyways, uh, you don't have to compete with anyone. Yeah. Let everyone have their podcast. I know. Yeah, no, we love we love all podcasts, and we got to be friends. I, with I a don't lot of though. I don't. I don't want. It's like why? It's like we just don't need any more podcasts. Which That's is why I'm we don't so need more bands. Yeah, we don't. There's a million million podcasts. It's like right, everyone's right. getting lost in the shuffle, Correct. and when when uh, you know Graham Bonnet is on ninety different podcasts, it's like. It, it drives me insane. Yeah. Graham Bonnet is the singer of Alcatraz, if, if you're not aware of that. And I guess right. he's doing a round of interviews, right? Uh, well, yeah. It's like, we'll fill in the blank. You know, it could be a, a, any, anyone. Yeah. But I no, just, no offense it, to Graham Bonnet. No, I, yeah. I just think it's a way for people to express themselves. It's no different from writing in a magazine or writing a book or whatever. You're Here's not going to limit think... authors and writing books. Oh, and you're yeah. not well, that's, the, that's the thing. Let's say... Emily, I'm glad you brought up the word uh, author. And, and the thing is, is that let's say you're somebody that went to school for journalism and, and you, you wanted to write a book. And then the next thing you know, you know, somebody just who has like a Microsoft Word thinks they're going to be an author. That, that story. Right. And I'm not saying that to you. I'm just yeah. saying that's how it is. It's just like if somebody has Photoshop, they're a graphic designer. Somebody yeah. bought a Canon camera, they're right. a photographer. So real photographers who spent their whole life learning photography are mad that some guy just went out and got an iPhone and wants to get his photo credit yeah. everywhere. And they're not real photographers. They're, they're like fake photographers. If you right. have a drum machine, you're a producer. Um, if you have Pro Tools light, yeah. you're an engineer. You know, I don't right. know. That's what's Listen, happening nowadays. You have nothing to prove. You are the architects. Of, we are. We are. We really are. Of podcasting and hard rock. 
period. We invented period. podcasting. John, nowadays people just- He wrote, he he wrote, wrote the, the code. code. There was no yeah. service that you go to yeah. to provide you an RSS feed. We yeah. we wrote our own freaking feed. I, you know, I have it's a like, picture. Yeah. I have a picture. I went to a someone's uh, engagement party the night that you guys recorded your first podcast. And my friends were pissed. And they were like, where's Mark? And I was like, um, he's, he's inventing podcasts. I said, he's recording, yeah, really did. he's recording his first podcast. And everyone at the dinner table went, what are you talking about? What is a podcast? Literally had to explain it to the entire room, what a podcast was. And everyone was like, that sounds ridiculous. And that and was you know, look what it led to. It looked, yeah. it led to 800 episodes. It led to a television yeah. show on one network. It led to us guest hosting the Headbangers Ball on MTV2, our favorite show as a kid. Oh, you've always been ahead of the curve. That's what that podcast led you, to. You've yeah, always so, been ahead of the curve. Well, thank you. But what's you. the next curve? That's why I'm enjoying this video thing because it's, yeah, we're going to repackage it as a podcast, but I'm so burnt out on podcasts. One million podcasts, there's 330 million people in the United States. <laughs> and then there's one million podcasts. It's like, podcast. I know that's worldwide, but that's like one out of every 330 people having a podcast. It's too, it's too much. It's, it's really, it's too much. And, and you know, what? I don't, I just don't okay. know where. Don't tell them what there. your next idea is because they'll yeah. steal it. Okay. Because it's going to happen. But they yeah, won't steal it and for 15 years. It'll take them 15 years to catch on, Mark, so it's okay. And Z-Man, by the way, is is checking in. He's watching right now. Z-Man, you are one of the original Talking Metal Heads, and yes. we appreciate your support. You were clued into podcasts way before all the uh, the, the <laughs> follower, the, I don't know what I want to call them, all the uh, jumping on the bandwagon people the past five years. So thank you for your ongoing support, Z-Man. And, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone I for watching. Say hi to and Lee I always end it on a grouchy old Sharon. man note. I don't know why I do that. So <laughs> sorry for bringing it down the party. Grouchy old man. No, I get it. We got we got a lot of people. We we got a lot of comments. 102 comments. That's pretty many. <laughs> Correct? Oh, I like that hat. Mark, are you auditioning for like it? Put that hat back on. <laughs> Doesn't really fit on my head, but <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah, I, got, I, I need a haircut. If, if too. I can't do a like it gig, you can put that police looking, uh, you know, <laughs> leather looking. Uh, Emily, I love when you wear those hats, by the way. You look cool. Oh, guess what? Emily, I'm not sure if you can see this, but you guys will both like this. I, I got to show something. Um, hang on once. It, it drives me nuts. Uh, I, I took can't a great picture. On Facebook. What's that? It drives me nuts that I can't see the comments on Facebook. I know. Right before I <laughs> took that picture of that opossum, look at this. And uh, <laughs> I just know you guys are friends with this person. This see? isn't them, but this is a name that reminds me of someone. And I thought it was maybe not an actual name. But wait till you see this. You tell me if you can read this name. <laughs> Lost uh. on Broadway. Now look above it. <laughs> Tama Von Johnson? <laughs> Tiana Von Johnson. I was going to say, is that related to Ace Von Johnson? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's another, you can catch probably him on about 10 different podcasts no, this week. I don't think Ace does a lot of podcasts, does he? No. But I just said that you guys know that guy, and uh, you know, I've met him, and he's a really cool dude. But yeah. I always thought Von Johnson was like, I, I didn't know if that was an actual name, but look, I, I was. No, that, I, that's yesterday. not his real name. That's not his real name. And then I saw name. some. It says Tiana Von Johnson Lofts. I don't know if that's an apartment building or what. It says, what's it say? Loft on Broadway, Tiana Von Johnson. Those are a lot. And Those are apartments. Fantastic. Yeah. It sounds very fancy. Pat PJ Larmark. Right says outside there is a possum. So <laughs> if you live there, you get to hang out with miscellaneous. Uh, hey, hey, listen. We, we need to rename it Possum Von Johnson. Possum Von Johnson. Is that a. All right. Are they marsupials or rodents or both? Rodents. The rodents. No, they're yes. marsupials. Don't they keep their babies in their belly? Oh, I thought they were rodents. We need to look that up. Anyways, uh, Pat P.J. Larmark says, you're the little Richard of podcasting. Uh, congrats. Pat, yeah, Pat, that's I, I like that. Pat I like from that. the Ace Gang. Pat, the number one Ace guy. Pat's my partner cool. in crime. We call it the PIC. 
And we, we also have a new symbol today, which I won't go over to the audience. But Pat and I have, you know how you do these emojis? Me and right. Pat have our own because we have a special bond. John, and costumes are marsupials. They are, see, I was right, marsupials. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't yeah. think I might know that. Do you think yeah. John Astronomy would no, know No, they what keep a their babies is? in their pouches. They're so cute. Yes. See, yeah. an opossum right. is a marsupial. Well, we'll leave it on that. Um, Victor Ruiz, uh, we're going to wrap it up right now, is saying he interviewed Mike LaPond, a, a great guy who's been to my house here for interviews. And, you know, he's frustrated because he's been on like 80 po different podcasts in the last week. So, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Um, I will say this. Uh, you know, Victor, he, who's been doing his Mars Attacks podcast for a long time, uh, you know, you look at, you know, even Classic Metal Show, who we once were in, at war with, now we're friends, or, you know, <laughs> Mitch LaFon, or uh, Decibel Geek. The thing that makes these shows successful is there's a lot of hard work behind it. And I think uh, yeah, I uh, there's a number of people out there like, oh, a podcast, anyone can do that. No, and I think we've proven that. And and to all the people f doing a podcast, just just be prepared that it's not quite as easy as it looks. I, I'll leave it at that. And that'll be my grouchy old man segment for tonight. Uh, <laughs> but I just, I just wanted to say that because I'm just sick of these well, people. I'm starting a yeah. podcast. <laughs> Well, I used to get mad when people say, I'm a graphic designer. Yeah. And I'm not even a graphic designer, but like, and that's what makes me mad. Like, oh, you're a graphic designer, but you got a Mac computer with Photoshop, or I'm a photographer. I work in the right. photo business. You know, that's. Oh, no. Me Look mad at the too. girls on Instagram. I'm a, they literally put in, oh, like yeah. model. 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 Yeah, I'm a model. What you, do you, yeah. you model for photos? No, I no. take selfies for what? and Your stuff, but I don't call myself a model. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're the. <laughs> <laughs> we are two people and by the way if you're just tuning in at this point the whole show isn't just us ranting and raving we we had any old jada from twist sister on we did a great interview. interview love had, love that uh jeremy asbrock from ace really and gene simmons band on we did a great normal interview with him and then we leave this last and then mark had his second beer and and went went dark yeah yeah mark mark went mean no i'm kidding you're still very nice and uh, so now we do what some people like, which is the interaction I and uh, dare I say banter. Right. Like, so if they wrote this in TV Guide, they would say banter with hosts towards yeah. the end of show. That's what right. it is. Host and good right. people hanging out like Emily's. Uh, Emily, cool. you, you did half of the talking metal when I wasn't even available. Like, so. Uh, yeah, Emily's done some great dad. interviews. We got to get you to do another interview no. soon, Emily. It took me about yeah. five years to do my first interview, which was with Jeff Tate. Oh, yeah. because Jeff he couldn't Tate, do I it, and I, he was yeah. finally like, "You have to do it." And I was like, "Yeah, oh, I did." God, I had to be aware. You did Jeff Tate when when I I was going to mention this to Eddie, but the, uh, my first ever rock and roll concert was uh, uh, Queen's Reich opening for Twisted Sister in 1982. Amazing. Well, you I mean, always say 82, it's, but then it's when, 83. when, when you right, spoke 83. with Jeff Tate, I remember he said that must have been 83. Yeah, no, he was correct. It was yeah. 83. I say everyone, 82. Everyone has to go back and listen to that interview, though, with Jeff Tate. That was my first interview and one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. It's absolutely hysterical. What Jeff, different than he's ever been in any interview, I'm telling you. like I think my weirdness and my uh, naivety – set him off and he just kind of was laughing and he's usually not like that in interviews yeah so. he, he can he can sometimes i mean it depends he can sometimes be uh a little straight you know he, you know what emily and i think even before you interviewed jeff tate you met jeff tate because weren't you at the gibson guitar showroom with us I, when we had jeff tate there and then there was that liberace piano i don't I think she was there she wasn't think, yeah and it must have been a different day because i know i have pictures of uh Jeff Tate with the gold piano, but I think Emily, I have pictures of you with that mirrored piano, like the, yeah. the uh, mirror ball piano. You have a picture of me with with the piano in that entryway, but I don't think it was when Jeff was there. Oh, ah, okay, there must have been a different day, but right. yeah. Been different. yeah, guys, right. I thought I was gonna look overweight, as they say, with this shirt on, because it's an old <laughs> shirt, but uh, I, I think you cannot tell if I'm overweight. Your quarantine ten, you your quarantine ten is not showing. Yes, but I definitely have it, guys. All I do is drink Coca-Cola. Quarantine and, um, 10. 
Yeah, well, quarantine. Let's all get up and show our quarantine 10. Oh, all right. No, I'm, I'm going to hold it. Look at this. <laughs> no matter what it is, if I can press it. Do it, John. Let's just suck it in. Soak it in. Do all it. right. Yeah. All That's right, man. Good, right there. Look at that. You look great, <laughs> yeah. John. You're ripped. You look fantastic. <laughs> Do I, I love, love you so Look much. at that. Abs. I got to get you back over here and fatten you up with some good meals. I know. I mean, here's what right. I need, people. So, I'm going to say it right now. I need, I need uh, the lifestyle lift. That's when they go in here and they suck this out. Lifestyle lift? Okay. I need what, to look like is this. that what it's called? It has an actual name? Yeah, it's called the knife. Yeah, a couple of people got killed, but uh, forget about them. It's a small percentage. They, they suck this out. Wait, they take the they gobbler took, out? They somebody take said, turkey? John needs to list himself as an Instagram model. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an oh, Victor, said, Victor said that. So tell me, they take I, the I gobbler, they take the turkey yeah, gobbler. They, they get that right out. They get they the turkey gobbler and out. they pull it up. Mm -hmm. and the, I need it. Right. And then right. I need like, uh, <laughs> look, oh, you don't want to see this. Here, but I need, I got, they need, they, you know, I need to, I need to fill this in a little bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get the gobbler. Let's get the gobbler. We'll go to the deli. We'll eat a turkey gobbler, and then we'll get our gobblers taken out. Mm -hmm. All right. And we'll get some Guys, more hair. My hair does not normally look like this. Look, I can, you know, if I push it all down. John. That's what oh I'm Oh, my God. For. You got bangs. John got bangs. bangs. Yeah, somehow now I have bangs. I don't know. All right. So, John, we started with uh, a little a kiss audio. with Bruce Kulik on guitar. I can't hear What? what uh, can you hear me? What happened? Mike's on. He's I don't like know. muting me. Mark is mu muting. No, it's on. Mike's on. Hello, hello. Testing one two. We can we can hear you. Can you hear us? You can't hear us. Hello? Yeah, it's on. I don't know. I haven't done anything different. It shows that we're talking. Look, the yellow. Yeah. Did All your right. thing die? Well, we'll just end with Put some music. music. Let's just dance. 